All right, welcome out, gamers and gamettes, to this RGL Season 1 Highlander Invite Quarterfinal going on between Fast Forward and Apollo Dodge. I am Alto, joined to my side by Mustard with Dolphin behind the camera. We'll be casting this best of three for the uh, for the rights to win at least $180 in this season. Mustard, how are you doing tonight? I'm pretty good. Looking forward to some Highlander, have some Highlander gameplay. You know, this is this is what matters. This is the playoffs. This is where, you know, the teams start to differentiate themselves, you know, like maybe they had some ringers during the regular season. Maybe they didn't really care that much. They played weird maps, but, you know, this is, you know, best of three, nearly with one exception, we'll get to that full rosters and, you know, we can actually figure out who the best is. Yeah, no, and speaking of rosters, just real quick, you know, from the last time you've seen these teams, there have been a couple changes. Uh, <laughs> Apollo Dosh replaced XBS on Med with Wall. That was about week six or so, actually, I think right after we had casted them. Playing Fast Forward on Asheville, no less. Um, fast Forward has had Rain move over to the scout position after Wish departed, with Dongus being picked up on Soldier. So, uh, And that's a change there. And additionally, for tonight, we will have Exa ringing for Spamfest, um, again, on the Fast Forward side. So, ultimately, I think the roster change is not going to play in too much. Spamfest is one of the best on Engineer, so that's going to hurt Fast Forward a little bit, but at least yeah. it's not on a bigger class. I feel like you would probably have to say that the uh, that the that the class changes kind of even themselves out. I mean, aside from the spam fest thing, but like losing Wish could be pretty big on very scout heavy maps. But gaining Dongus and the level of DM that he brings, I think, could be really helpful as well. So I think we'll just I, I think depending on the map, one one of those or the other could matter more. And I know Rain and Wish had good chemistry, but I do think. Dongus is probably looking to like prove to people that he still has it, that he still is, in his opinion, the, you know, the best Highlander soldier. I think it's I think it's pretty debatable right now. There are a lot of good soldiers. It's kind of hard to say who number one is. It's pretty close, but I think he could he could provide a DM element, especially on this first map of Viaduct. Uh, yeah. So maybe we should we should just get right into talking about this map. Uh, real quick, right before that, I do want to bring up that the season record between these two teams does sit at 2-0 for Fast Forward. Mm -hmm. Them having won 4-1 on Asheville earlier in the season, and uh, actually winning 2-0 on Steel just last week. Um, with the RGL playoff formats, the way it works is that each team, or at least there's a pick ban, but the map pool only consists of uh, maps both teams had played. So between these two teams, that was you know the three maps all the teams are going to share, Product Upward and Steel, with um, Swiftwater and Asheville being thrown in on top of that. AD led off with a steel ban, then we had fast forward pick product, uh, AD picked upward, and then fast forward picked Swiftwater for the third map, should it be necessary. But yeah, product's an interesting map for me because, you know, you'd think they'd pick Asheville having already beat them on it, but Fallen's been having a really strong back half of the season, and I feel like maybe they're playing, uh, they're playing with him in mind. And it's funny you mention him because I feel like, from my, you know, possibly incomplete understanding, but from all the stuff that I've seen... I would probably view Fallen Lord as a more consistent sniper than Shea, but I feel like Shea can reach ver a very strong peak, and, you know, sniper can be, not, I don't want to say arbitrary, but a lot of it can come down to who's hot on a given day, and I think uh, if Apollo Dash wants a chance to win this this map, I think Shea really has to show up in a big way, and I'm I'm not sure if he can do it, but it is possible. Like, I'm, look I'm looking at him as definitely an X factor for, uh, for, um, Apollodash, and I'm wondering if there are any other players who you particularly feel like on either team are really going to, you know, step up, or at least could be, like, big contributors to their team. Yeah, rather rather than players that I think might step up, players I'm looking to kind of maybe see erase some of their weaker games in the regular season are both the demo men, Arts, and Exile. Because <laughs> I feel like Exile has majorly underperformed this season, compared to, you know, what a lot of people would have expected coming into it, expecting him to be one of the better demos in the div, as we do have teams uh, readying up. Arts, meanwhile, has a little less experience in the class, a little bit weaker DM, and both of them have had their games, but, you know, Exile, you'd think, would be a very, uh, you know, you'd think he'd be a commanding force on the team when really he's relied more on the flank and the sniper to really play things for him, and, you know, Arts, I think, is really looking to kind of cement himself as a really solid invite mm -hmm. demo man, so I'll be looking towards them. It might be because Exile has, you know, missed a lot of scrims with work. Maybe he's a little less in sync. He has dif like differing opinions on what to do in given pushes. But I feel like Viaduct can be a bit of a get a bit of an equalizer. I feel like Fast Forward is pretty good on this map, but they have a history of playing it. So I would probably favor them. Uh, I'm thinking like a three to one, perhaps. But we'll see what happens. Um, and I definitely think Dongus can make a big impact on this map in particular. It's almost like maps like this that aren't necessarily good soldier maps intrinsically, unless you really bring something extra to the table. I think I think it could just it could just really suit his DM heavy play style, and I want to see 
He can have a big impact as we go live here. Who are you watching on this first mid also? Who you I've got? got Exile on here, seeing what's going on with the demos right now. Both of them landing some spam. Art's actually going to get taken down pretty low. Matt trying to cross over on the caution side. Going to get bumped by Exile, but no. Pablo and Satan actually both going down immediately off of uh, opposing spam. No scout on the mid should hurt for that cap time, but no pyro means that bombs and spies begin a little easier. Wall's going to get stabbed immediately yeah. though by Del Dongo. Really strong statement pick coming out from him to get this match started on the right foot. Ronnie J on Cliff going to try to deny the point. But, uh, oh no! Ma <laughs> Shay take out triple and then Mad's going to come and take out Figzy and Exile. So actually, yeah. no, the spy on AD. Going to see uh, see Dongo's stab say, I can do you one better. Finds two kills. And actually, with even though most of Fast Forward down, they do have enough cap in that it looks like they're stalling the cap a little bit out of AD until they get spawns back in. Yeah, we might see a second mid fight here. And I, I wanted to say, you know, Viaduct can often come down to which medic dies less, and it, it, it appeared on the first mid that Figzy was going to survive, but, you know, both spies did huge work, and it's really, I think the medic surviving battle is really going to be big, and because Wall died first, their team actually comes back in first, and then just to secure the cap. Let's see if, let's see if Asport fights this again right away. They have lost rain. They're losing a lot of players. This, this doesn't look super great. They might have to wait for one more spawn wave. Yeah, especially with them having this at as Wolf or uh, Figzy, excuse me, was the second and time. Mad, Mad, Mad Mad's gonna go. Oh, that's gonna take her out in house under the cover of Triple. Really, uh, really kind of coming in and saying like, you know, we may be the underdogs in this one, but we're uh -huh. not here to mess around. And Shay will get the snipe onto Fallen uh, and Dongus as well, wow. getting a 3K for himself in a matter of seconds. One thing I'd wanted to say in the lead-in is that you missed it, but in week nine, fast forward, got four would by KD on product. And despite getting 4 0'd, Fallen dropped about 600 DPM and had yeah. almost 20 frags more yeah, than I anyone gotta, else in the server. I gotta look at those logs. That was pretty impressive. So, but, uh, you know, yeah. I, I was going into this thinking he'll be a major factor. And Shay right now, currently top scoring in the game. Gonna get a kill onto Exile as well. Fallen will get the counter snipe onto him, taking a river as well. Should open things up. Figzy, though, having died again with major dis add. Fast forward, maybe gonna try to get the force out of AD here, but no pressure on wall means that they're sitting pretty on this point. Yeah, and. I, I just I just feel like uh, fast forward looked a little disjointed in terms of having maybe not enough players around their combo and and either Figzy or Exile have been, they've both been dying a lot in this early going. So I don't know if they need their scout to play course for them, their pyro or what. But it just feels like they're not super cohesive on that end. And even though they're getting more kills in some of these fights, they're losing the priority picks. And as yeah. I say that, Figzy does have full uber as Wall goes down. I missed that. And did Exile bomb in or was it a roller? No, that was just pipe spam. Figzy actually had wow. gotten out at about 15 HP right to the cliff pack. And I think uh, I think Dongo might have gotten a revolver shot on her. I didn't see all of it, but no, it was just a long range uh, pipe that hit her in pocket. So fast forward will recap now. They did have to use that uber, but with Wall having died beforehand, there will be slight add in their favor. Fallen is not currently on rock, not sure where he is right now. Dead, actually, having just respawned. So it looks like AD is going to try to go for the drive, but As no Mad gets are going to Oh, oh no. he's going to take and out rain. rain too and live. Dev going I... Sorry, go No, no, Dev going in on Cliff is going to eventually find uh, Triple with the help of Pablo. And Mad's gotten pulling off the hat trick. Can to get Fallen too? Still not having died. Mad uh, yeah. trying to challenge Shay right now. We kind of mentioned those players that you need to see an AD go off. That being Arts and Shay, and they're sitting at the top of the scoreboard with Mad right now. So AD, you know, sitting pretty, looking in a pretty good position to win this round with less than a minute left, or as fast forward, it's barely taking a vent off the clock. Bomb coming in from Dong. It's gonna find one rocket on wall. Not enough though. Dongo going down as well. Cap time on the point for fast forward. Ronnie going down, but Triple get traded right back. Not much for this to push off of. As Mad gets Pixie again, this is just a disaster. In these transition fights, they're just not spy checking properly. And it really comes down, you can play multiple players on their team, but it's really hard to conceive of them losing this round. Maybe not even losing the point again. They still have full Uber with only 20 seconds left. And I mean, I would personally give the edge in combo play with people like Exile still, even with the slump to, uh, to um, fast forward, but it doesn't matter if Shay and Mad are just gonna kill them every, in every single fight. And they really need to get those pick classes under control. It's as simple as that. Yeah, Exile does get an entry pick onto Shay to kind of start this. Uber coming out of AD, though, is going to be finding Frank. Dongo down, Rain down. The rest of the team can force back. Vixie going to go down to Mad again in the Uber. Counted, that's five med kills in a single round for Mad Ring Me. And AD is going to come out with a statement round and go up one nothing in this best of five. Not only did he man it, did Mad kill Figzy five times, but I think every other kill he got was, was, or at least a huge amount of them were on Fallen. I think 
he's he's just been going after the priority classes and they really have to protect those players better it's it's just unacceptable to let your sniper and medic die that much on this map yeah i mean mad ring you know i've said it in the article Edward, he's having a quietly good season nothing you know maybe to this extent mm -hmm. but i feel like satan we've seen it in the past where he's been a little bit i guess lax on protecting Figzy from things, and we're kind of seeing that again. I mean, obviously forcing all the blame on one player, you know, Figzy can be spy checking more, Triple can be getting in on that, but it just feels like Figzy has little to no protection, and that's being compounded for her not checking enough, but... Daldongo took yeah. down Wall on this particular mid, so the roles are reversed, and you know, things can turn quickly based on a couple of med picks on this map, you know? You can be winning your fights, but if you're not hey, being able to keep your medic alive, eventually you'll just out-spam. And we now see fast forward with, I think for the first time this match having a good chance of starting around with the hold, but nice sack by Dev actually forcing out Pigsy Zuber. Yeah, really good. Gonna help even that out. Shave's gonna take out Fallen as well, so Wall's sitting on about 25% out, and with that sniper down, they might try something. Nipnop's gonna get taken out by Satan, so a little less flank pressure. Satan was actually super deep in on the, uh, the AD grass. Exile gonna be taken low. Dongo out, it looks like, safely. Might loop around, try to get in on Shay. Can't see that uh, through the wall right now. Yeah, Dongo yeah. wins it out, and uh, that's a big pick. I mean, Shea was the, the most forward player on his team. He had a couple seconds of sniper advantage before uh, Fallen Lord spawned. But th th a lot of progress is being made here by uh, Paladosh, and they kind of lose the point. I, I, I didn't see what happened there. I guess they just got muscled out, but would have liked to see them put up a bigger a bigger fight. And it's going to be even Ubers, I think, by the time both these teams go back in. Yeah, I felt like Arts was just getting a little bit more spam and Fallen having been down at the start of that, and AD could take pressure pretty safely. Eldongo's gonna get caught out, so no stabs coming in. Both meds gonna be sitting on Exile full Exile dies right, right before the Uber, though. That, that's just gonna delay this longer and longer. Are they gonna push without Exile, or are, they gonna, or are they gonna wait? I mean, either way, it's not a good option. That's why you definitely don't want that to happen. Yeah, Figzy really forward. Mad, oh, looks like he's gonna run out of cloak directly in front of Donga, so uh, not gonna get number six yet, as... The rest of Fast Forward is kind of still sitting back on Cliff right now, maybe trying to work Fallen for a pick. Rain's going to get taken out though, and they just keep bleeding players. Fallen though does find the counter snipe, which means that this push should be a go soon. Figzy aggro in pocket, going to meet up with Exile, having respawn. They're going to start walking across, milking this pretty well, not much. Uber is going to go off, Ronnie gets taken out early. No flashes, one flash onto Satan right now. As a Fast Forward, it looks like they're going to cap this point pretty Uber. Not quite as Arts and Pablo try to block it, but that defense won't may actually end up be working out. River and Arts are going to go down. Lots of players down on Fest Forward, more so than AD, but the pressure they got in that Uber allows them to cap. But Matt, yeah. six, and then gets six and a half onto Exile, and, and before Rain. even taking out Rain, that's... Yeah. As Delgongo takes out Shay and Wall, these spies are going insane. But I was going to say before, I was so rudely interrupted by Mad making a ridiculous play. I was going to say that it was actually a mistake for Fast Forward to cap the point there because it was inevitably going to be taken back right away. They were already down players and they gave up the better spawn, so they should have delayed for a couple more seconds. They are winning the fight anyways, but, you know, either way, we're going to see another big fight here because both medics died pretty at pretty much the same time. Figzy does, actually, I lied about that. Figzy does have about a 30 add and having come up a little bit early. And uh, it looks like they're going to use that to retake, which is really good. But ARZT is doing a lot of damage, and... Uh, this fight could still go either way. I think Fast Forward is gradually winning it. Yeah, Dongo going to get the kill onto Shay. Fallen following it up onto the demo. No real strong offensive classes for AD left. River's going to get a little aggro, shooting off some flares, but nothing too serious. Dev's going to bomb in, looking for Fallen. He had found him before, and going to miss that last rocket. Can he take it on triple? Now the Natasha. Thinks he getting forced, I think. No, nothing um, on yeah, her. I guess um, they just um, wanted to... I think they thought the other team was much closer than they were. That was a mistaken call. And Exile try to overcompensate bombs in and dies. That was a really weird miscommunication. And yeah. Figzy goes down to a oh. fight. That's just, it, 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 these things are just domino effects right now. You know, like one little mistake will happen for fast forward and suddenly they'll just get completely obliterated. I feel like the same is not happening for Apollo though. Yeah, Dongus though, at least trying to minimize the damage, lands a really nice bomb onto Cliff. Gonna take out Shay and Mad before going down to Dev. So there are some advantages here. Falling gets a pick onto Nipnop and with, oh, gets the air shot onto Dev as he jumps across rock. Crazy frag, and uh, we will see the Uber forced out of wall. Doesn't want to give up the point this quickly as the time's gonna tick just below a minute. Arts really forward in main, gonna get caught out. Really nice air stall rocket by Dongus there to make sure he can't escape. Now going in again, all the way on to Cliff. Gonna find, try to find wall and spawn. Does go down, but the distraction's enough to let his team cap the point. And this round is much closer than the one we just had. Yeah, for sure. I, th I think we're seeing a lot of plays 
there's still some some pretty unfortunate deaths from the combo at fast forward, but just enough fewer that their flank is able to make plays. And I do think guys like Dongus and Rain and, and, and can, can make plays on the flank. And Fallen Lord is still holding his own on Sniper, but just need to keep Figsy alive in these crucial situations. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, both meds almost even Uber. Very slight add for Figsy. We are going to see a bunch of Sniper trades. Sniper frags are traded back and forth. Exile going down for fast forward means none of that defensive spam. Art's going down as well, though, equalizes it, as it looks like we're going to have a pause coming in right here. Whew, chance to catch our breath. Highlighter, highlighter uh, Vida can be pretty hectic, but, uh, yeah, it just seems like, in particular, the, the demo men on both teams are just not staying alive. And I know you said that's been a problem for both of these players this season, but, uh, you can't let rounds just come down to which demo gets picked up Say first. that, but they're both top scoring. <laughs> Yeah, well, those mini centuries are are going down a lot, I guess. No, yeah. I don't know. Uh, it, it's true, but I, I do think that, I mean, they're still putting out a lot of damage. I don't want to take anything away from both players, but I do feel like so many of these situations are being swung by these priority picks. Like, I feel like both teams' flanks are doing, except for, I mean, their scouts are kind of getting owned, but I feel like both teams' soldiers, NGs, etc. are doing a pretty good job of uh, making openings for their team and not dying unless they have to, but... There, there have been some pretty unfortunate deaths from the medics, from the demos. Uh, and I do think Fallen Lord has gradually caught up. We were, we were praising Shay at the beginning, but I think both of them are doing good work at this point, as are both spies. I think it really just, it's really getting a little messy, and it's, it's just these combos need to stay alive more in some of these situations. Definitely, yeah. It feels like both demos are doing so much with all of them dying that if one of them can just, you know, stay out of the sight lines and stay alive for a minute straight, you know, you can just imagine how much they're going to be doing there. Um, looking at it right now, thankfully RGL does have a config where it's fixed that nasty Uber bug that, you know, during pauses where Ubers will continue to build. So we can look at that now and we know that we're not going to be getting uh, baited out. We see Figsy does have a slight add. Fast Forward does still have the point here. Um, not sure on respawns as our HUDs have continued to, you know, kind of tick down on that. But, you know, looking, looking like Fast Forward, I'd say, it's probably the favorite to take this round right now. Um, on the figs, he can stay alive and get this Uber, you know, it means that AD is going to have to get some kind of pick, which granted Shane and Matt have been very good at doing, and then win that fight afterwards, so definitely yeah. close, but uh, yeah, I think if either of those demos, as you were saying, can really just, you know, pull it together and continue doing the amount of damage they've been doing while also not dying, that, that'll be huge for either team, if everyone can figure it out. Yeah, let's see, can, Matt, Matt is, is the one uh, pick class, well him and him and both snipers, but he's the one spy that's still alive and he's coming across the point. I feel like if uh, if this combo that's chilling in pocket for uh, fast forward, I mean, Exile is still dead. They need to get a couple more people here. Triple can do some things with the Natasha, but if they can regroup there, they should be able to hold this. But I'm a little worried that with right now, it's it's only Rain, Triple, and Figsy there. If they get caught out right in the next couple of seconds, that could be a bit bad. And I think one thing I have noticed I should point out, we were talking a little bit about Exile's absence from the team at certain points. I've noticed a couple of situations where he seems to want to leave, you know, the relative safety and, and comfort of, of that little pocket area to move to the right side of the point or to run across the point and do damage. And it seems like Figsy is a little unwilling to follow him. And I think trust is so important uh, for the demo man and for the medic class and Highlander. And I don't know if it's uh, Figsy getting burned too many times in Exiles overextending or if she just needs to be a little bit braver. But in a lot of these situations, I think they're just a little bit out of sync with each other. And I'd like to see just a little more cohesion from that combo moving forward. Yeah, I mean, one thing you did mention, though, is that uh, they are, you know, Fixie was kind of alone in pocket. Fallen, though, taking a pretty aggressive angle on Concrete right now with his flank. So not sure if that's been called. I doubt it has. It looks like he's back, as we will see an unpause. So he's in position to kind of catch out some aggro. But no, immediately gets taken out by Shay. So I was wrong on that. It was called. He's going to land the headshot onto Triple, launching him back. Mad coming in will be spotted, though. Dongus... Craters. Uber gonna come out from the red team right now. River doing a good job of stuffing this triple up on the sign. Will go down, it looks like, right at the very end. So AD getting the better of this trade will cap the point back. Not sure how much time left on it due to the pause for uh for fast forward. As Figsy went a... down at the end of that fight, that's incredibly huge. Not only did the Uber Uber come out earlier, but then Figsy went down right in the middle of that. Couldn't get out at the end, so. If the time's sticking down here, this could be a bit rough. They need to re-push pretty quickly as Figsy switched to quick there. They need yeah, to make this push count. Only five seconds left on the clock. They're getting that hug, hug reload scheme in there. So fast forward gets one pick. They're going to be good. Dongo's going to dead ring across the point, but Satan, Exile, and Rain all going down. Shay getting the kills. Figsy going to go down to the sticky spam coming out of Arts. 
Shane Dev being traded back though. Not enough cap time really for Fest4. Triple barely on a sliver of health. Might get chipped down, will go down. Lots of cap time. Exa doing his best alone. Stalls enough for Exa to get back in. We'll take out Arts. Rain taking advantage of better spawns. Mad in on point. Gonna revolver him down. Exile having met back up with Bigsy. They have the cap time, but no. Uber comes out from wall. It's gonna be a heavy Uber. Mad in on Bigsy and Exile gonna beat the stab. We'll take it out on Exile. Dongo in on point, stalling it, but it's not gonna be enough. And we will see the 2-0 coming out from AD here on product. Oh lord. These these just it's uh, so much of it is just keeping the medics alive. Like both medics have died in a couple unnecessary ways, but it really seems like Figsy more so. Like the, their team just needs to get a better read on some of these pick classes. Yeah, I mean, Fallen and Shay both having this week try to pull up logs. Normally, I believe we're supposed to have this played as one half. But has the wrong config executed, which will probably see this amount. Um, if we can pull up the logs, though, yeah, I mean. I don't know if you've got them up on stream, but uh, Fallen, 17 kills, tied with Mad for the top. Arts and Shea right behind them with 16, Dev with 15. So, uh, you know, you, we mentioned the snipers in the demos, and they're they're really coming up big. Uh. Exile, not too far behind either. But As when you compare... Uh, look, you go. Yeah, I'm just saying, we see, we see uh, Fast Forward retake the point here, finally. This is the first mid they've won, I believe. As a... Uh, we see, we see, we see a bit of a stalemate, but uh, you really want to see fast forward string around together here. At least get some confidence for the next map. Yeah, definitely. Dev, uh, Dev, going in for a big bomb. Going to be taken up by Fallen on the SMG though, as a bit of an odd mid fight. I think I missed some of that looking at the logs, but we will see Figsy alone in pocket right now. Very low. Mad coming in, going to get in a position to go in on her. Only needs a couple of revolver shots. No, goes up for Fallen. Gonna, oh, he's gonna get called out on Cliff as a uh, cap time has gone in fast forward's favor. Nibnop and Shay going down to Fallen in that time. Raiden Dong is being traded back. It was triple so aggro and caution. Ronnie's gonna be forced to eat a sandwich undercover, but Big Bomb in on the dev. Second rocket's gonna miss Figzy, and it looks like she's gonna live for now. No, finds another one. There it is. Kill coming in on Figzy. Triple dropping down from Cliff. It looks like gonna open up his med to die. And even though fast forward got the first cap, it's gonna be AD coming out of this with a more secure hold. It's just too easy, man. And I mean, it's tough because you feel like so many different players have still done best take down Shea, but so many different players are culpable. You know, Triple could have denied that soldier earlier. Satan could have reflected those last rockets away. Figzy could have been in a, in a position that was less vulnerable to soldiers in the first place. But like, it's just a confluence of factors that's leading to the medic dying over and over again for fast forward. And that's just, it can't happen like that or else you're not even giving yourself a chance to win these fights. Yeah, Fest4 is going to be surging back though, find a ton of kills, all in very short yeah. order from different factors. Going to retake the point pretty convincingly. Wasn't, uh, didn't see exactly where that started from. Mad going to get the stab onto Fallen, could open up a repush as Walt does yeah. be 40% at. And the last push, that dry push, started from a sniper pick as well. That was what enabled them to get in so freely as we see. Yeah, well, with that Uber ad, are, can they force the super out or are they just going to not risk it and wait for Uber? It looks like they're going to choose that path. But Exile needs to live here until the Ubers come in. He's being a little, he needs to be a little more cautious, thinks he's only at 90%. And winning that sniper duel from Shay right before this uber trade is huge. So, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, good uh, good adaptation from Satan, especially with the Scorch Shot Act. He's just firing those off at Shay on Rock. The Darwins means he's not going to take after him, but the Ubers are going to get popped. Rain faster, gets dropped uh, in the Uber, though. Yeah, faster pop out of, uh, or later pop out of AD, excuse me. So they're going to have the ad here. Art's getting good damage in behind Rock. Not gonna find any frags with it, but Fast Forward doesn't have too much ground here to work with. Arts will get stabbed though. Big pick coming out of Dongo. No spam. Mad getting caught as well means nothing equalized. And Wall going down to Fallen means no combo left. Shea getting the counter frags and Satan and Fallen. So there are numbers down on both sides, but with heals on Fast Forward's side, they should be able to slowly work this point. Triple aware of that. Gonna start moving forward. And it looks like Fast Forward will come down with the cap here. Yeah, finally. I mean, they let a minute run off that clock there and. Shea is still wreaking havoc. They need to get it. They need to get their mans on him. Looks like he's moving in and looking for Fallen Lord. Bit of a stalemate there. As Del Dongo comes in and takes him out. Really good play by Del Dongo and Fallen Lord falls it up. Falls it up. Both these teams' pick classes are really showing up today. Yeah, no, just really strong performance out of both of them. Mad will cross safely right now. In position to go in on Fallen. Who's playing alone on boxes. Finds Ronnie on Cliff. Violates that kind of sanctuary for heavies. And, uh, oh, big trades coming out behind Rock, though. Mad gonna go in. Dongus went down to, I think, a dev bomb, I want to say, or a rocket coming out of connector. But yeah, no med stab means that Vixie's going to be sitting onto this ad. Some aggression coming out of Arts, trying to work the point here. 
no cap time going down yet as Festival does have 9 up. Fallen's gonna be forced back a little bit by Spam coming in from Dev, but uh, Art's going down for that crit scorch shot. Not sure how that happened. Snipe onto River too, really is gonna stall this push. Oh, he gets Pablo as well. Fallen really uh, holding this point for his team single-handedly, it feels like. Yeah, for sure. And actually, is that a level 2 sentry that I see? It looks is. Like our, it looks like our cast and comrade Exoflamer is bringing in, bringing in a bit of a bit of a full century as Figsy's Uber does get forced. That's a nice play. Wall is going to have Uber advantage now. Let's see if they can force this out pretty early as they're losing players to Shea before this Uber even comes in. Wall might not even have to pop here. That's a bit brutal. Yeah, Fallen going down early is going to stop that. Good spam coming out to the gun. Not going to go down yet as it will force out the Uber. But they dropped the Arts. Drop Art, yeah. yeah, Art's going down. Gun's getting wrangled now. Dev so close means it probably won't be up for long. Yeah, Matt's going to get the sap on it. Should go down. Oh, Hexa can snipe before he can unsap. It's a level three. Not going to do too much. It did get the Uber out at least. And, uh, oh, Dongo's going to come in, get the stab onto Shay. A lot of AD dead and respawning. It's really just Ronnie going to go down to fall and gets the kill onto the, uh, onto the enemy fat man. Should open up the cap for his team with 20 seconds left. Fast forward's got a long way to go if they want to win this half, but this is how you got to start it. Yeah, and they have to make sure Figzy gets this Uber. They could they could win the fight without even that Uber coming into play, but they need it as insurance just in case things start to go wrong for them. And it looks like it looks like they'll be relatively safe. The you know, soldier bombing in from Dev. They need to shut down Dev here. Dev does go down. Good job by Triple. And now that they're getting this Uber, they can just pop in. This should be this should be round for fast forward. Yeah, exile Triple. Rain going up. Rain's gonna get dropped actually. Just the pipe kind of that even. Triple getting sniped out as well. Things aren't going as well for Fast Forward as they would have wanted. Still have frags in their favor, but AD is going to get in on point. Level 1 up in main from Exa. Going to uh, help deny that right side of the point. Exile doing his best to work on the left. Wall's going to get stabbed out by Dongo. No heals on AD means this is going to be a tough fight to win. Pablo and Mad in alone, but uh, not going to be able to find anything. Pablo down, only Ronnie close to the point, and with the heavy being so slow, it doesn't look like anyone's going to be able to get on it in time. What? Does a little bit, but uh, going to get sniped out. Yep, yeah, finds him again. We now have a 2-1. You, you know, Alto, we've all been in that game where your team is playing like garbage, you feel like nothing's going right, and then suddenly your sniper just wills you to victory, and it just seems like he's tilting fights so hard in your favor from the get-go that it doesn't matter how garbage your team is playing. And I feel like that's what's happening right now. Fallen Lord is really stepping up in a big way. You're right to highlight him. That last round was pretty much him bailing his team out, if I'm being honest. Yeah, and he's going to he start up the mid-fight <laughs> with a snipe onto Shea. Dongo's gonna go down, so no stabs, but that sniper pick, he'll take that for a spy any day. Dev getting taken low, mad, though, will find the counter sniper pick. So no snipers He knows what side his bread is buttered on, he knows who, who he needs to focus in this situation. Exactly, he can still go in again, so we're gonna have to look for that. Decloaking, gonna go in, won't find anything, almost takes out Vixie, she wasn't really aware, but he messed up the timing a little bit, and with that, uh, with that, the presence is gonna go in the favor of AD, so they win the mid fight here, looking to, uh, show that that last one was a hiccup and that they can take product as a map on their own. Yeah, there's some pretty crispy pipes by Arts forcing the team back. They basically won that just off of the damage, not even all the kills exchanged. So both teams have Uber here. The Uber is forced early from fast forward. They need to get that Uber out. They do drop Pablo. Both these scouts are getting dropped so much of these Ubers. It's really a little questionable. Fixie gets popped up. Can she survive? She does. Not too Good. much health left, but uh, that's really scary for him. You can pop up anytime at the end there. Dong is going to go in, in deep behind enemy lines. Will help Rain take out Wall. And it's going to be a really successful push. Dev going to try to stall this, takes out Exile, but ultimately Cap going to go in the favor on Fast Forward after a near wipe from AD. And again, I hate to be nitpicky, but, and it was hard for him to get off the point given how quickly he died, but as soon as Exile died there, they should have gotten off the point and waited for him to spawn. That's just me being a bit, uh, bit nitpicky, but, you know, all this matters, and with Exile dead, the, uh, uh, Apollo Dash is going to be able to repush right now. Let's see if there, and a hold can be mustered, or if this is just immediately going to flip back in the favor of, uh, in favor of Apollo Dash. Big bomb out of Dev, Pixie and Ari, the Wrath Assassin coming out from Pablo. So the bleed means that one rocket's all it's gonna take. Dev and Mad going down, so, but that uh, unfortunately for Fast Forward, even though they found Wall in that fight, you know, they repushed fast enough that they, you know, they didn't make the Uber Ed matter, and Exile going down proves that Dev attacking for that frag was really important. And I gotta say, man, uh, Pocket looks like a very safe place to hold, right? But. Because uh, Apollodosh knows Figzy is going to be there all the time, they're just pre-aiming it, you know. Arts is standing his pipes there, Dev is just bombing Cliff every time. And they're really playing well around the fact that the Medic so commonly holds there that if you don't get any call, you know the Medic's going to be there. And they're just killing Figzy time after time. Oh, Dongus, as of the Uber's getting a forced out from Wall, Dongus had gotten in deep behind, took out Shay, and while uh, River hit the reflex on the rockets, it was enough that Wall felt threatened enough to pop. Dongo going in on the backside is going to get found out, almost takes out River with the revolver, but... 
Nothing much to be found. Presence, though, seems to be maybe in fast forward side even as they're grouping behind Rock. Gonna try to start edging. Art's getting sniped. Alden doing more work for this team. Pablo going down as well. He's gonna lead a cap back in their favor. Ronnie being the last vestige of the AD defense to die. Yeah, and Wall, Wall does escape, but Figsy with a huge uber advantage. What they need to do is they need to start running time down. They need Figsy to not get forced here or dropped. They need to make Wall have to wait for Uber and then have a favorable trade, maybe hold one more time. They can't just allow this to be leapfrog because they have the time disadvantage and this is the last round of the half. They have to really put up a strong defense here. Yeah, X Exa up on the level two again in main, getting spammed up by Arts right now. Would kind of like to see him. Oh, Mad in, gun's gonna go down. Exa might end up going down. No, Mad misses his shots and will go down eventually. Would like to have seen Arts be pressured off a little bit to keep that gun up because it could be something that, you know, stops that uber leap frag we see so often on product. They are, however, will have full add as Wall's coming us up on it. Now, Shay gonna take out Fallen Lord, opening up the point, and they're gonna swarm onto it. Uber coming out onto Exile, Rain and Nipnop, the first ones to die. No other tracks really to be found as lots of flashes on both sides. Dongus gets taken out as well, so numbers add in the favor of AD and the spawns. They're gonna take advantage of it. Arts moving forward, forces uh, uh, fast forward, excuse me, back. Triple getting forced back onto Rock as the cap has gone in their favor. And that fight was all Shay. Because Shay killed Fallen Lord immediately, Arts was able to run across point without his medic even uh, Ubering, and he forced the defensive team to actually have to Uber first, which is never what you want. And it really started from him not having to worry about the sniper there. Now, granted, he might have run forward even with the Cypress still alive, knowing Johnny, but uh, it might have not gone as well. As we see a beautiful oh. push from Fast Forward, they just annihilated everyone yeah. on the AD. Fallen took out Shay and Arts, and we saw Donga get the stab onto Ronnie, and, you know, with that Demo Sniper heavy down, not too many people left to actually defend the point. Easy retake for Fast Forward, as Fixie does still have slight add based off of her popping earlier. While sitting on 85 means it should be even Ubers, and the times are going to be just about even right now, so really anyone's game. And I don't want to be Captain Obvious, but you know, sometimes snipers can matter a lot in Viaduct, you know, they're really proving their worth here. They're winning a lot of these fights before they even start, making it, you know, those 9v7s. As we see, Mad taking out Fallen, this should make the repush, once again, much easier. They can maybe afford a milk here, as long as they watch out for Del Dongo. As Satan takes down Dan, that's a good pick to start this, and Wall is forced to Uber first, but... Oh my god, they just dropped everyone! Oh, Figsy getting stabbed as well! She didn't even end up using! Matt, uh, Matt, after getting those five kills in the first round, really didn't make too many splashes onto Figsy, but gonna find a really important one here. Now, if that Uber went off and all those players didn't die there, you might see, you might see the this exact even out opposite. Two -two. Yeah, you yeah, might see exactly. the exact opposite as what just happened in that fight. I mean, thankfully, the uh, the Ubers aren't gonna be too far apart with only 30 seconds left on the clock. Though Figsy's gonna have to build if she wants to get She's this. She's on crit. They're gonna get. Oh, they're on crit. They're gonna get really aggro here. Gonna find Dev. Uh, some cap time gonna back up now for heals, but yeah, they need to dry push this if they want to be able to have a chance of winning this map. No frag yet to be found either. Shay on cliff, fallen. Uh, not sure where he is right now, but definitely gonna be looking for a shot. As fast forward actually does come down with the point just off of edging there. Digs That's really 90 good. Percent on the crits, they're gonna get it first. Yeah, and they're gonna get it as the other team comes in. This could be huge, but oh! Shay takes out exile right before his sticky gets right click. His sticky was on top of the entire enemy team. Huge place by Shay. Oh my lord, if that sticky got dead a half second, maybe later, Walt dies there, I'm pretty sure. That looked to be right on top of her, but, you know, as we said, the sniper is coming up really big, gonna end up denying that, and it's gonna be AD taking the first map, I guess. I'd say in upset fashion here, 3-1. I'd agree. Match. I mean, not only was Fast Forward the higher seed, but you have to keep in mind, man, this was, uh, this was Fast Forward's map pick. And, uh, I don't think that at all means that, that precludes them from being able to win upward just because it wasn't their map pick because I think most teams are pretty comfortable on upward but certainly it's not good to go down in the hole 1-0 in a in a single elimination playoff format when you lose your own map pick that has to feel really demoralizing especially because I feel like a lot of their mistakes were preventable you know like they had a lot of fights where their where their fragging classes were doing work and their medic just went down when uh, when Wall didn't and that's just that's something you have to avoid on Viata. Yeah, honestly, I mean, if you look at the we, have the, we should have the stats for that whole round now. If you look at it, you know, the 3-1, see 14 deaths on Figzy, 7 on Wall. And I mean, I think you mentioned right in the start, you know, right after the first mid fight, Vida can also just be, can also, or often just be whoever's med dies less. You see twice the deaths on Figzy as you do on Wall. And, you know, I mean, a lot of them did come in that first round, so maybe you could write some of those off. But Wall was staying alive in crucial moments, it felt like, when Figzy just wasn't. I have to point out. Figsy died 14 times, 8 of them were mad. Mad oh. got 8 medic picks in that game. 
And uh, I mean, I think I think all the pick classes from this game really came to play. Uh, I def I definitely think the snipers were fairly even. Maybe Fallen even edging it a little bit. Top yeah, fragging and damaging in the server. Although Shea was no slouch either. 571 DPM on a sniper is always impressive. Yeah, no, he definitely did his job. Uh, Exile and Arts were pretty even. Dev got a couple more kills than Dongus, which is, you know, still keeping up that hot streak. But uh, I really think a lot of it came down to the medic protection. You look at it, look at the damage taken by the medics. While only taking 140 DPM, half as much damage as Figzy, it just shows you so much of this game came down to medic protection in general. And... Uh, Again, even if you're putting out more damage than the other team in a lot of these fights, I should point out, actually, even though Fast Forward lost this map 3-1, they only did 1,000 total less damage than the other team. And they won half the mid-fights. You know, they gave themselves a chance to make this a very close game. They just couldn't keep their medic alive in these crucial situations. Yeah, one, one moment that just really stuck out to me, I don't know if Dolphin got it on cam, he probably didn't, but there was one point where we saw Dongus do the same bomb we saw Dev doing frequently, you know, the skip jump off the two cliff rocks. Got in on Cliff, killed Shea, then when he walked back up and tried to get in on Wall, you just saw River, you know, reflect both of those rockets. And, like, compared that to the amount of times we saw Dev just doing that same bomb landing on Cliff, For sure. where he just finds Figzy, and it's not even, like, one of those, you know, A-plus bombs where he just comes flying in, sinks two rockets on her, and she dies instantly. He's landing on Cliff, reloading some rockets, and just, you know, AD peeking it to not die, and she just eventually goes down because Satan's either not reflecting them or he's already dead or, you know, there's no one in place to stop him, whereas Dongus was getting pressured. And, like, even though that was a relatively insignificant play, I'd say, in the long run, it's just kind of a microcosm of, like, what you're seeing with these two meds here, it feels like. Yeah, and it's not... Like, we're looking at all the at all the medic kills, but it's also, you know, forces, it's pressuring medics out of the fight, it's, you know, maybe picking off Exile while Figzy has to play back, you know... They really just kept the pressure on the combo sitting in that pocket. And I don't know, maybe maybe things needed to move around more. Maybe their team needed to sort of, sort of rotate around, even risk the sniper occasionally because they were just getting pinned down in that corner. Uh, it, it, just, it just was not, not a pleasant situation. It, it, really feels, it really feels crappy if you're playing one of the classes that's not typically around heals as much, like Soldier or NG or whatever, and, and, or Spy, and you just feel like you're, you're in position to do something and suddenly your medic dies, you know? Successful pushes just turn into sack waves, you know, and uh, we, we, You have to hope that that tilt factor because fast forward is a team that can get very emotional You have to hope that, that tilt factor can stabilize on upward, you know Upward is a map where if your medic has fairly passive positioning as Figzy actually did It's harder to punish so maybe if they just play it very standard They can keep their medic alive and give themselves a chance to win these fights Yeah, I really like that you bring up the mental game too because I think uh, I know you were there uh, AD Apolodosh is kind of the spiritual successor, I guess, of DPM, mm -hmm. you know, the old disappointments per minute. And you were there when we casted that marathon, I think, three hour, like all three payload maps went best of three match a couple seasons ago when they played against Team Spoo all that back yeah. when. And like we've seen from then that kind of trend continuing where AD is just a team that really is strong in the mental. You know, they don't, losing a map doesn't tilt them. They don't, you know, their, their mumble atmosphere is always loud and it's always, you know, having fun. So I think the fact that, you know, even though they did lose that round at the end there, they're coming into this on the up and up. And as you said, yeah, fast forward team that can get tilted. So they're going to really have to kind of breathe in, breathe out, reset, and just regroup here. Because I do think that upward, I think upward going into this, I would have said would be the closest map between the two. Um, no, nope. I wasn't expecting Apolodosh to really come out that strong on product. But I, the last map is Swiftwater, and I think you have the uh, the benefit of... Yeah, I was actually thinking, ironically, Fast Forward is probably most favored on the Decider map. Like, I, like completely putting Mental Edge aside, I would definitely say Fast Forward would be favored on Swiftwater. They've had some pretty good performances on it. But they're going to have to get through this while, like, fully tilted. I think if they can start off pretty well and upward, they can maybe salvage it, you know? Remind themselves this is a different map, that they can't dwell on what went wrong last map. It's not relevant anymore. They have to just play this map correctly. And, you know, it's going to be payload for the rest of the night, so... They just have to reset. And you're right about Apolodash. I mean, they definitely, they play like they know they're the underdogs and they have nothing to lose. And it's, it is refreshing to see. You know, they're willing to just go in. Yeah, you think back in that time when Dev sacked in 1v7, found that pick on Exile that ended up, you know, giving them the point back very shortly after. Just small plays like that can really kind of snowball. And another thing too, you know, bringing up a little bit further to Swiftwater if we go there, is that even though the map was in the pool, because both teams played it, with the faction having died, that the quote-unquote Swiftwater match for AD was actually a forfeit win. 
So, Fast Forward's had the advantage of playing, you know, Irene and K and D on Swiftwater and having competitive mm -hmm. matches with them both times, whereas AD hasn't played a match on it yet, really. I mean, they have a name, but not in actuality, so... If they can just regroup, you know, you, and the other thing too is that you know you have your pieces working, right? Exile's having a really good game, Fallen's absolutely popping off, Dongo's finding frags when you need him to. Like, no one on Fast Forward, it felt like, is really single-handedly really shitting the bet, right? It's 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 kind of like a team failure to just play the right way and not get picked off and not bleed. So if you can just cover up those mistakes, you know, you have all the pieces in place to win. It's not like, it's not like you're playing, you know, it's not like you're trying to play a chess match when you only have checkers, right? You have all the pieces, you just need to be using them better. You just have to hope, because uh, Fast Forward is starting on offense, you just have to hope that they don't get into a situation where they just run their heads into a wall and start getting really frustrated. You want to hope that they can have a decent push pretty early on, or else this could be a long night for them. Or a short night, I guess, I should say. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens here now that we're going live. The first couple kills are coming in as Shea takes on Fallen Love. This doesn't mean that much, you know, the first wave is rarely that successful, so... You want to see if uh, if fast food is shy. You want to see if fast forward can gradually start forcing, uh, gradually start forcing Shay off of that playground, maybe even kill him, and get out pretty far without having to Uber. Yeah, and upward, upward is a very defensive sniper oriented map. Maybe up until last, where you know it's just so much easier. You have a number of angles, and you generally know where the offense sniper is going to be coming from. Mad could be the first one to die on his team. About eight or nine frags coming out in the favor of AD before one's answered. Dev getting super ass on the card. Oh. Triple just ran in with the fists and beat it arts to death as Shay, as Shay goes down at the same time. You love to see those creative strategies and yeah, if you look at the scoreboard, it looks it looks like both teams have even numbers of dead players, but they spawn so much faster on blue as River goes in and kills Fallen Lord, but still you'd expect to see a decent push out of here. Fallen had already taken out Shay though, and that's the really big pick. No defensive sniper. Exile's gonna get spammed in, the gun's gonna get pulled out as the Uber is popped in return. Not a, not the most necessarily uber trade important things, um, fights, excuse me, on upward first, but it's gonna be enough that the gun gets pulled back and they are gonna end up getting this point, so, bit of a rough start, but ultimately, again, upward first, not that bad. A minute and a half is, you know, you'd mm -hmm. like to see a little faster, but certainly and nothing they... to complain about. Here's the zone where they, where they really start to get tested. Yeah, and they can't really take hill yet because Exile died. He bombed in to try to get wall, which is not a play I necessarily disagree with. I think the risk word of that is pretty good considering how fast he spawned, but, uh, Dongo takes down Ronnie J, that's actually a pretty big pick in trying to hold this hill. All they need to do is force Shay off the hill, I mean, that's easier said than done, but... And oh, as yeah. he takes out Exile again, Fallen does take him out, but you would have liked to see Exile not peek for like another second or so. And Fallen falls out with, uh, follows up with Arch Spaniard, he's continuing his form, as you said he might. Yeah, so no demos means Triple's gonna get really aggro in window here, gun just coming up. Triple might be able to take advantage of that. Really aggressive, yeah, gonna take out the gun, not too much risk to himself. Pablo getting a little bit aggro on Kuth right now, not gonna be able to keep too much. Cards slowly getting pushed up tunnels, still has a decent amount to go though. Matt coming in on Fallen, gonna blow him out, and oh, he will go down eventually. So, good on him to take out that sniper, might open things back up for AD to move in here. Big bomb out of Dong is gonna take him up onto the wall. He goes in with that sky high bomb. Uber's gonna be taken out from Fixie, and Dongo's gonna get the stab on Arts mid Uber. So, following the drop, Fast Forward's just gonna collapse as we known them to do, get second in a pretty blistering time and take Uber advantage into third. Yeah, and you know, you said one thing earlier that I didn't quite agree with, you know, I think you were trying to be diplomatic, you said no one really, really pooped the bed on Viaduct, and I was definitely thinking Figsy, you know, I think some of it was on her at the end of the day, but she seems so much more comfortable on Payload, I think she really, you know, she hasn't died yet to the best of my knowledge, and you know, that's really what you want, especially on offense, you know, continually getting this pressure, and I think that... They have a good chance here with that 30% uber advantage. Let's see if they can make something happen on their very first push. Yeah, you know, third... The, the points on upward, it feels like, get progressively diff more difficult to push at times. And, uh, Shay actually, yeah, gonna be kind of showing that gets kills onto Fallen and Rain, taking out a lot of the, uh, playmakers on Fast Forward, it feels like. No cart time either means that it's gonna be sitting there. Fast Forward does have full add here, so once they get spawns back in, Dev going down too means they have an opening. Looks like Vixie's gonna pop pretty early onto Exile. Going up, they are gonna catch out Shay. Really aggro there. Wall super far out, all the way backing up into upper, actually. So she's not gonna get caught out on that, but no heals means, uh, fortunately, though, that no one goes down to that Uber. Lots of cart time right now. Looks like it will get pushed up the second hill at the minimum. Spam coming in from Dongus, but it's reached that kind of checkpoint. Falling gonna bump into Dev from behind after taking out Arts in Shithouse. So it's a bit of some crazy flank plays, but yeah, 
Looks like Exa with the front, or that's not a frontier justice, that's just a blue skinned uh, <laughs> shotgun. We'll get, get it up there. So fast forward, really showing that they were able to kind of reset four minutes through third is a fantastic time. And while it's uber advantage, but she's actually alone just with Pablo up top. You want to see if they can, and, okay, they get their demo there now, but still, yeah, this is really good play. If they get Pixie off of except, I, I take it back, I didn't realize Pixie was that close. But they really should have done it instead of sack win there, because they could have forced out Wall without needing to commit their medic, given how few players were there. Still, this isn't the end of the world, their medic is going to be up fairly soon, and there isn't that big an uber advantage. As Fallen takes down Arcs and headshots Shay, he's continuing to just completely destroy the other team. Yeah, and Wall's still caught lower. Shay actually on his own against Dongus. Wall's just gonna and leave Del him. And Del gets the gun. He got the NG oh, and the sentry. That's really important to get this early. Normally that can be such a, just a bugaboo to kind of getting this point. No demo though. Arts will should be spawning soon and jumping upper, hopefully. Fallen's gonna go down too, so good kill out of Shay. Kind of stop that pressure. But Spam coming up from Dongus, gonna get some damage in. Not too much though. Big Z is not anywhere overly aggressive. Looks like they're gonna try to take front stairs. Not the most common push with uh, the soldier being able to deny that so well, but slight uber red in the favor of red. Gonna have to see what fast forward does to break this. Yeah, you'd like to see them once again maybe try to force, well, I mean, I guess they're so close to uber that at this point it's all right to wait. You'd like to see them try really hard to get a nice trade and maybe go through lower, get the uber out pretty early and then just try to recommit without their medic getting fully caught in. But uh, River forcing the Uber really early, I think that's actually worth it. I mean, it's a bit crazy. It probably wasn't necessarily the smartest play, but it worked out as they're losing everyone on the flank. And I'm not sure if they're going to get out here. Yeah, 100%. Looks like they're not going to be overly chasing Fixie. She doesn't have anyone to heal, though, which means that, you know, despite getting forced early, she's actually going to be about dead even with walls. So not even that, you know, kind of 10% funny advantage you can make a make like a cheese play off of if you get really aggro with it. Um, but yeah, AD looking to have kind of slowed down Fast Forward's momentum, really gotten a solid hold here. Going to really need to see some pressure applied onto Wall, either through a kill or a force, or maybe see Dongus try to cheat up through that uh, that back drop down as we see a lot of soldiers do. Really aggressive play from Figzy though. Exile's going to go down, and she will get out with her life right now. Shay being sniped up by Fall means he can get some room in, but Dongus taking going down to the gun. That thing being built back up is not a good sign for Fast Forward. Yeah, and having run for fast forward on Demoman, I should say, I think this is one of their bigger weaknesses on this map, is they can too often get in the habit of, we don't have Uber yet, instead of running sacks, let's just sit around and wait for the Uber again. And I think Exile actually had the right idea, they're running in and he piped Wall down to 33 health, but you really would have liked to see the rest of their team try to drive push there. I mean, when neither Uber is in play, I mean, that upper area is not as safe as it looks, and they just wait for these Uber trades again, and with a better Uber, you know, Wall is able to deny that. Great aggro on Cart though. Oh, the snipe coming out of Shea is going to take out Bigsy. Oh, and the rescue ranger so coming close. out of Nipnop going to take rain off of Cart. He had that thing inches from the edge. And that, yeah, that uber trade again going in AD's favor. Wall, decently low health. Going to get a Sammy, though. Be back up. Fallen trying to get a shot in on her. I think to be found, though, is he gets stabbed up by Mad. And, and Exile overextended at the same time, which I think is born of frustration. I think he's saying, guys, I'm going for these players. Why aren't you supporting me? He probably feels like he's the only one in. And, uh... That time it was pretty dumb of him to die, but I think the time before that he was definitely right. As you see, this can be a bit of a bit of a questionable thing that happens on upward, right? When you have the cart that close and your team gets so panicked that you just kinda of start going in one by one. You really want to see them do what Triple is actually doing here and take over upper, you know, get that base of operations and just start running plays from there. Yeah, ideally you see Fallen get up there too right now. He's just respawning, but if you can get that sniper kinda of up in that little uh connector area between the front stairs and the back stairs, that can do so much work. The bomb gonna come out of dev, not gonna find anything though. Triple in place to deny him. So good on him for that. The gun is slowly level one. It went down to exile spam. Rain gonna get the cart up, but will go down for his troubles, taking Pablo out with him actually. As we do see Ronnie J getting into the lower spot. Uber's gonna come out, not really popped on anything. Gonna take out the gun. River goes in for the stall, goes down without getting too much done. Exile though, right near the heavy. Ronnie doing work in lower, comes in with dev. Fixie gets one, two saws onto Ronnie, almost gets the third, but misses. Rain, though, on that cart, looks like he is going to tap it in. Eight minutes and 22 seconds, not the best time, but certainly not the worst. Yeah, and that was, uh, like, it's not the worst time overall, but it is a bit of a disappointment given how well they were doing up until that fourth point. And again, I think, you know, having having run for fast forward on demo on this map, I think, you know, when you're, when you're one of these Highlander teams that's worked its, its way up, you know, from from just like playing together and you know building up your resume in Highland. I think it, it can lead to like really strong map knowledge, maybe it'll come out on defense, but sometimes your players just don't take the risks that they need to. You really would like to see them play a little more aggressively in some of the situations. I feel like 
once you get those ubers out of the way on the last, you should really have a plan to like recollapse or at the very least to run a sack because you should always be doing something, right? Like you should never have a period where you're just completely idling for the next uber. I mean, there's no downside to you know running sacks on offense, and I really would, or even to just fully dry push and try to take upper there. And I felt I felt like. Once again, you saw a bit of the, the uh, lack of sync between Exile and the rest of his team. I think he did want to go in some of the situations, and he was getting frustrated that he wasn't getting the support that he wanted. So you hope that that'll maybe improve, but they're on defense now, and I think they know have, have a pretty good idea how to play this, especially with Fallen Lord going off. Yeah, you know, if that sniper can just get really settled in on one or two points, you know, you can see how much work he can do. Shay actually going to find the opening frag on the Dongus, just, like, uh, just like last round, except now the teams are swapped. Lots of players out on card already, nothing too aggressive, and uh, be passive play from Fast Forward, and a triple actually up on the cliff, not on the uh, playground like you normally see heavy, so that's interesting. Ronnie getting forward, oh, gonna, I think he was trying for the same fist play, we saw triple go for it, but he's gonna get stabbed out. And uh, yeah, no stacks yet, just some jockeying for position right now as Arts goes down, gun's gonna get pulled back, Shay getting stabbed. Again, kind of what we expect. Sap going in on the gun, though. Mad hit, not getting found out a little too late. And the force comes anything, in. Though. Oh, yeah, good play on yeah. Dev there to get the damage in on Big Z. Uh, smart play by Dev to time it so well with the Sap. And I think Dev is showing a lot of confidence in, in his moms, you know, just like getting in and uh, make it, making things happen, you know, and really good job. Yeah, I like what Figs is doing though. Playing in the tunnel with Rain right now, something you used to see a lot more often that hasn't been done as much just because of how safe it is. I mean, you could get stabbed potentially, but nothing else really going to get in there. Uber's going to get forced out pretty early from AD, but with Figs playing so back, no real contest from Fast Forward. They are going to get almost all their players out. Saint, the only one dying for the second hold. Gun going to be uh, put up as well. So, should be in line for a pretty good second hold right now. Matt going in, going to find Figs though. Playing alone on the rock there with Fallen, none of the uh, spy check classes really with her, with Triple being so aggro. So just like we kind of saw with uh, with AD second hold, Med going down is going to kind of open up the gates here. Yeah, and I mean, the PTSD has to be rushing back with the Med picks starting to come in. That's not what you want to see. I mean, they, uh, Fast Forward has to remember, you know, we, we can still get a good defense on third and fourth. You know, those are still, in this version of the map, the harder points to hold, or the harder points to push, rather. And uh, they just need—they just need to find a way to force Wall's Uber relatively early. I think if they can find a way to force the Uber on this point, that would be really ideal. They did get Arch Spanion, who overextended a little bit. That's a big play. As Exile well, doing work, and they force the Uber. This is huge. Yeah, and what's nice too is that there's such a long cart time between second and third. Is that you know you know you're gonna have time to kind of back up and reset. Exile and Dongus are gonna go down, but Jigzy gets out, Fallen gets out, X is still alive, so there'll be a gun. You know, most of the defense should be set up. Ronnie's actually getting really aggro with River on Yeah, catwalk. I like this. River's, I gonna say, oh, like... River's gonna go up the drop down. Oh, but he's gonna get caught out by Triple and air blasted <laughs> up to be taken out. Flying heavy, gonna find his revenge. Triple versus Ronnie in bucket, it looks like. Triple gonna back up from that as Dongus kinda takes over. Ronnie barely escapes with a sliver of health. Gonna start eating the sandwich. Oh, and he baits Dongus in. Takes out Arts, actually. Not the kill he was looking for, but. It's a kill nonetheless. Falling in the counter snap onto Shea as well means that, again, we're going to have to kind of see AD work from scratch on this third push. Fast forward was able to do it fairly quickly, but uh, I want to see if AD can replicate that. They did it on second. Maybe they can do it on third. Yeah, and I feel like there, Ronnie and River actually somewhat had the right idea, and I think their whole team should have pushed. I mean, Exile was still dead. If you can take over that uh, that bucket area, if you can take over the, the bend, you know, with with uh, with no uh, with no demo man alive on the other team, it's huge, and it can really stage pushes, but... As we see the fly swatter come in, but uh. Yeah, Dongo going in for an eagle stab. Shay gonna get aggro in shithouse right now. Could find something. I don't think they know he's in there. Dong is bombing in on cart. Not gonna find any kills. Actually, Ronnie goes down to stinkies, but Nip not pushing. Nope, gonna go down. Ubers will get traded out behind the cart right now. Pablo getting good cap time on it. Might get it up the hill. Exile's gonna force him off for now. Rain will take out the uh. Moving the scout, <laughs> scout on the flank fight, so. No guarantee yet, but AD still has a lot of positioning, and once, if anyone gets on that card, Dev could be on it right now, gonna realize he probably should jump over to it. Fallen goes down, he gets stabbed at by Mad, so even with the gun still up, Fast Forward is being forced to kind of scatter, and we're gonna have near identical time through three. Yeah, and I, th I think I think Fast Forward just has to remember that last is still so eminently holdable. I mean, and they're giving themselves a pretty good chance. I mean, they have a lot of players still alive. They should be able to take over upper and uh, just start delaying this. I'd like to see what... Uh, what, if anything, uh, Apollodash does before the Ubers come in, but it looks like they're probably just going to wait for it. Understandable, they're already at 80%. And, uh, 
you like to see you'd like to see uh, fast forward start to stabilize here, keep their medic alive, not get backstabbed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I'm gonna be looking at Dev a lot for this kind of last hold because I don't think we saw Dongus make too many aggressive plays to really maybe try to get in on wall. Whereas Dev has shown his willingness to bomb at you know every possible instance of deck. Uber is gonna get forced out pretty early. Fixie does have in time. Couple plays. It's gonna get dropped, but with that heavy getting the rest of this Uber, yeah. Down. Fallen goes down as well. Shea gonna be traded out from Exile though. Card getting really close actually. Gonna cause Exile to drop down. He will be able to jump right back into upper. Good sticky to jump out of him, but the rest of his team lost a lot in that time. Near wipe out of the uh, fast forward combo. Fixie barely escaping with her life. And thankfully that level three is up to kind of stop a lot of gun pushing. Big stabs out of Dongo as well. Gonna take out Wall and Ronnie. Card nearly in before finally uh, getting reset. Dongo gonna clean that up as well before getting sniped out. Pablo in on card, but again, X's gun doing work. Art spamming and gets it low. Unable to take it out, misses the pipe at the last moment. Yeah, and it's important to note, you know, fast forward only got to this uh, far of a situation, forcing the other team back all the way to spawn. When there was, I don't know, maybe like 90 seconds before they finally pushed it in. So yes, it is possible to hold this for the next two and a half minutes, but now they're at the point where they actually have to do a better job of holding than they did pushing, which is the first time that's been true in the map. As Mad takes down Oh my god, he's just doing so much work up there. He keeps making it past the dispenser and uh, he takes down he takes down Exile. That that might make this really hard to hold with no demo man that flush the card at the very end of the track there. Yeah. Ronnie tried to take the triple the uh, lower spot for triple. Unable to do that though. Dipnop on card, gonna get it forward. Dev gonna go down too. Triple doing work, takes out wall. Oh and my god. Pablo, the 4k coming in actually. X's mini got some of those, so smart on him to switch. Not entirely sure where that is. Probably upper, I'd imagine. But uh after that kind of collapse, we do see Triple even eating getting the sandwich off and lower to kind of remain a, uh, a bit of an anchor there. Dongo goes and tries to find something. We'll get taken out, but Fallen keeps racking up the kills. So uh, fast forward, able to hold for now. Two minutes still left on the clock, though. And, you know, only it only really takes one mid pick or one key class going down on upward last to get that card in. So And Figsy comes up on crits here, which could work out either very well or very poorly. If Wall pushes in prior to getting Uber, and they actually manage to get this crits first, this could be really good. On the other hand, if Wall gets Uber in time and Uber's early, it could it could it could become irrelevant. This could either this could go either way, but I understand taking the risk when the card is that pushed along. I actually don't mind it. I want to see what happens here. As Dongus comes in, trying to make a play up top, but he gets denied very hard. Really good control by Ronnie. He goes back in. He's he gets shit with the whip. Oh, nip up on card though, getting it pretty far up. Triple did back up from spawn. Now only now getting back in that lower spot. Gonna be have a huge target on his back, I'd imagine, after the last uh, push where he did so much. Figzy about to come up on the crit. She has it. Wall's at 90. Are they gonna be able to use it in time? I don't know. I don't see them right now. Looks like they they're not try. gonna. Do they get it off? They use now. No. They're gonna get River and Shea. Wall will get the pop off in time. It's only on a heavy though and a demo. Not too much they're gonna get out of this now. Triple gonna be getting rushed by Pablo. Frags are in fast forward, super wall gonna go down, so the crits play does end up working out. Yeah, good job by them. What happened was, Arts was really far forward, spamming away from wall. Wall had to use the whole uber to try to save, run away and save players rather than using it to push forward. Exile was completely unpressured, and the sniper was down during that entire time, so he could keep, he could keep shooting sticky. But Mad takes on Fallen Lord again. This is getting really close, 25 seconds left to get to anyone's fight. The triple is still doing so much work in the underneath spot. Seems like the team's finally recognized that they're Ronnie, really focused oh, on him. Yeah, Ronnie goes to the top, still not able to take him out. Card gets super close, Pablo the only one, or Ren the only one on it, and River's gonna take it in just like that. We mentioned 25 seconds, and it looked like Fast Forward had a grip on it, and then something, you know, yeah. the, 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 the winds change direction, I guess. AD just swarms the card, and no one on Fast Forward is able to deny that, so. Well, you know, there's that's why I always said that starting on defense was better. You know, you see the time to beat, and I think there is a huge psychological edge, at least when it's still mathematically possible, to seeing X amount of time left, even if it's very little, and knowing exactly what you have to do. And what you saw right there, with only 20 seconds left, it forces everyone to get aggressive, right? They know the parameters, so they all went in at the same time and essentially did a nine-man sack for the cart. And because they were all in sync, you know, first of all, very smartly, they forced triple off of that heavy spot, which was really controlling the map, and... uh they just forced the cart through with a lot of players still alive. So really, really just really good aggressive play from Apolodash. Yeah, really would have liked to see them just be a little more aggressive in that hold. You know, with 25 seconds left, you know, you get that you don't want to die and, you know, be that guy that's the first domino to fall to let them cap it at the same time. You know, you run the risk of just sitting too far back that they just cap the card and, you know, you lose with six people still alive, it felt like. You know, it felt yeah. like there could have been more pressure on there with just how quickly that happened. I wasn't even expecting it. 
you probably tell by how surprised I sounded. Mm-hmm. It looked like Fast Forward just had a solid grip on that, and you know, if anything, it was going to come down to one second. But they take it in the mere in a mere matter of seconds. X's gun was in a peculiar spot, being on that kind of lower spawn, meaning it couldn't cover the back end of the cart. And yes, they just took advantage of that. And with Triple not being in that lower spot, that had done so much. AD is now on match point right here. Yeah, and I'm looking at the stats, and they're actually much closer in that particular round. I mean, which makes sense given how close the round was. I don't think the medic dying is as much of a problem for Fast Forward. I just feel like there are a couple situations, especially on their offense. I think, if anything, the offense was the bigger problem for Fast Forward. With, with two teams like this, you know, you'd expect them maybe to be a little better on offense than they are on defense. And I feel like Fast Forward just, there were too many situations where they got very stagnant and they were kind of going in one by one instead of cohesively bombing in all together. And at least towards the end, I think we saw a better job from Apollodosh doing that. I mean, what really won them the last push was a couple of coordinated efforts where they just sort of all zerged in together. And I think they're just, honestly, they're just showing better teamwork at this moment. And you'd like to see that reverse course a little bit. I think important to notice, too, is that Fast Forward had more kills, but less damage than AD did. So, you know, the, the frags are there. I think we mentioned that. You know, even might have been on product, but the thing kind of applies. They're getting, they're getting the kills. They're just not working off of them as well. Whereas, you know, you see AD just kind of run in there and just take the point, really, with no one down. I mean, Triple got forced out, but he didn't die. He was just in spawn while they capped, and no one else was really able to get in there other than Rain, who, you know, one scout can only do so much against an entire team. Yeah, and it, it just feels like so many of these fights, I mean, I even was starting to think this, there was a there was a fairly successful Uber by Exile pushing with Uber Ad onto third, right? Before they ended up in that last grind, where... Uh, it was a solo on Exile, which I really don't agree with. I mean, I feel like you should try to get a couple guys in when you have Ad, try to get really aggro, you know, so that one pyro or one sentry can't waste your whole Uber. But um, they didn't have a scout or soldier come in, you know, it was just Exile. And he managed to do enough with that to, uh, to, uh, to win the point, so I wasn't going to say anything about it. But it did come true that having these, you know, Exile solo Ubers with everyone else sort of hiding or pushing the cart, I feel like is not just not a viable strategy against a good defense, you know. They're just going to deny him, and I feel, I feel like they really need to get, like, I don't know, get like give a flash to Rain or to Dongus and really just try to take some more aggressive presence. Even get Triple in there. I mean, I know heavy Ubers aren't great, but, you know, Triple just a little more aggressive. Triple 22 and 6 that half. Yeah, he was, he, he was completely the MVP holding that last point right there. He made it really close, basically single-handedly, but... What I think is impressive, too, is that you say, oh, well, he got 22 kills because he was just sitting in less farming people. He only got, he got 11 kills in both halves, meaning he was doing mm-hmm. just as much work on offense as he was on defense. And only and, six deaths, yeah. given how, how few heals he gets, is pretty impressive as well. Yeah, I mean, only 15% heals on a heavy, still having, you know, only one less death than his med. I guess you, can, you could maybe say he was baiting a little bit down there, because he was the one getting all the kills while his team was standing on card. But even so, I mean, another thing that I think is just neat, too, is how not only was the half close, both teams almost completely mirrored each other's pushes, <laughs> right? They both spent about a minute on first, they had second and two. You know, where both meds got picked off to really open that up. Third, looked like defense was going to get a hold on it before just a good push out of offense got it in four minutes. And then you saw Fast Forward take four and a half minutes to push last, with AD taking four minutes and 15 seconds to push last. So the margins it's coming down to between these teams is so close, and it's just really fun to watch. For sure, but you know, you have to wonder if a little bit of exhaustion is going to start playing. And I mean, in the back of their minds, Fast Forward knows that to win this match, they have to win this round, then win the next round, and then go on to win map three. Whereas, you know, AD is so close to closing it out. On the one side, AD might start to get nervous, so they don't really seem like the type of team to do that. On the other hand, Fast Forward might start to get demoralized thinking about just how how much has to go right for their comeback to happen, you know? And so let's let's see if they can start to string something together. They do get to start in defense. As, yeah, definitely. Uh, the... And I, I think I think it's good that they're starting on defense because ultimately, you know, in almost any other time, you'd take a four-minute last hold, right? Mm-hmm. Although we, it looks like we will actually have a pause. Um, yeah. I, Fallen had mentioned in chat that Figsy's internet was having some glitches probably towards the end of the last round, so maybe it's something based off of that would be my guess. But You really hope that doesn't end up determining the fate of the round because obviously the pause is 90 seconds in the future. That would be really brutal. Just not, not to be too demoralizing, but I feel like we have to throw that out there. Um, but yeah, no, I feel like the the defense starting on defense is going to help fast forward because if they can hold it down to like a I don't know seven or eight minutes at least for for I mean obviously if they if they give up like a four minute time it's not going to matter right but if they can hold it to like a pretty okay time for AD then they can see the numbers in front of them of what they have to accomplish and you know 
if I'm saying that they're not being cohesive and aggressive enough, if they see like two minutes left on the on the clock pushing last, you know, maybe it'll inspire them to be a little more aggressive because they know time's running out. That's what you hope to see there. I feel like that's that that's the big psychological edge of starting on defense is being able to see the time you have to be at the very end. It just can motivate people knowing what they have to achieve. And I think that has been their biggest problem on this map fast forward is just not going going forward at the same time, frankly, you know, not collapsing at the same time. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely true. And uh, what was I gonna say? I I don't know. I think fast forward. You mentioned how much it seems like it could be, but ultimately, you know, if they they knew after they lost product, they were gonna have to go to map three anyway. And if you really think about it, I mean, you need two halves here and two halves on Swiftwater. Like they've, I mean, they've had comebacks. If you remember that match they had against K and D, and we do that, we casted. You saw fast forward get blown out of the water in the first half against KD, and then they were able to regroup and come back. And, you know, we mm -hmm. saw them kind of starting off slow on product, having lost that first round. And then afterwards, those next three rounds were a lot closer than the first one was. So maybe, maybe fast forward just slow starters. I mean, I hope for the sake of the cast, we go to a third map just because going there is always a lot of fun. And, uh, you, 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 just, you just have to worry, and I don't want to be too negative, but you just have to worry, like, is this the same fast forward that we saw in that week? I mean, do they frankly like like each other and want to compete for each other as much as them. do they have the morale i mean this is the team right that relative to ad you know fast forward i think has done a better job at uh actually making matches competitive against irene and knd whereas to the best of my knowledge ad got kind of slaughtered in most of them didn't uh, they well ad actually ad went lost took a half off of irene and knd in the first half of the season um that was against that knd that we saw just like fast forward missing a lot of players and then Irene had tried out their new roster against them for the first time on Borneo, but you know they were. I I had the uh, we didn't end up casting the K and D Apollo Dash match, although we probably should have. That match was ridiculously close. AD was about one or two pixels where they didn't even get the cart up the hill unless they had the cart like parallel with the ground. It just didn't go in a couple times. So I'd say that they had the chances, but towards the second half of the season, both teams did peter out where I'd say Fast Forward did manage to make a little more competitive games with the higher teams than AD did. Yeah, so maybe I'm talking out of my ass a little bit, but I do feel like on some level, you know, on some level, some guys in Fast Forward might be thinking a thought along the lines of, I can't believe, you know, we're losing to this team. You know, we should be better than this, you know? That is a thought that I feel like they have. And, you know, that might be true on some level in the sense that, you know, they were slated to be high, a better team. They were the higher seed. They were the one team that actually beat either Candy or Irene of the two. But, uh, at the same time, you know, you can't be thinking that now. This team's being good right now, and you have to beat what's in front of you and not get demoralized and know that it's still possible. So as we see, uh, things are going things are going back live, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, no, it looks like everything's uh, set back up. So the player's uh, sliding around a little bit, but Fallen going to uh, echo Shay, get the first kill of the round onto the soldier. Art's going in for a bomb. Doesn't get too much air time, though. Going to be taken out right kind of down in front. Triple this time playing a lot closer with his combo, not on the cliff that we saw him do in that last half. Not sure if that's going to end up mattering. River hiding kind of close. Going to get in against XL. Run in, gets the force onto Fixie again. So River kind of going for the solo play, even with his team dying behind him. He manages to get that force out, which is going to be really important. One thing, though, that I did kind of hint at is that is I feel like the Ubers on upward first only matter so much as getting the gun, where you rarely get a whole lot of kills in them. If fast forward you just keep falling alive, keep the rest of their players up, the fact that they got forced isn't going to matter as much as it might on a different first point. Yeah, as long as they play it correctly, i.e. when they realize that the going is about to get tough, they leave, you know, they don't give Shay a chance to snipe four of them on cliff on the way out, you know? And Exile actually gets down here on the way out to that uh, to that lock and load, as does triple. So are they gonna be able to get a second hold up here? It could be a little tough. Yeah, would have liked to have seen Satan just playing a little bit more forward there just to deny that Uber because you think if he goes in and denies that, Exile probably doesn't die, Triple doesn't die, so even if, you know, they don't hold on to that, which I think it might have been possible, you still see uh, you still see them have more people out getting a hill hold on second. Dango's going to take out Shay, which should open up a lot of ground. For but Matt gets Fixie! But Matt comes in and takes out Fixie, echoing that first half, or that first round on product, going to take her out there. And without any heals, it looks like this is going to be a second roll for AD. And I feel like that one is a little bit on Fixie because Satan was dead at the time. And, you know, it's this transition where you have Uberad. You have to expect a player like that to come in. And it's all the rest of the team, too, frankly. Not just not just Fixie, but, I mean, checking for spies is a collaborative effort. You want everyone to do it a little bit to make it easier on your pyro, you know? 
and Mad just keeps getting in time and time again. Really good play by him, but now we're setting up an uber advantage situation. I know the HUDs are probably still a little wonky for people, but uh... Yeah, it looks like we did see Figzy disconnect, and saying in chat, it looks like Coldster may be coming into play Medic for Fast Forward. It's like, uh, might have been her internet again, kind of getting the better of her. They don't have a Medic right now, though, which you'd think they'd, you know, kind of take it. I guess they already paused this half. I don't know if AD's denying the pause, or they just... Maybe they're just more tilted than we gave them credit for, and they just kind of want to get it done with. But, uh, without a med on second, we're seeing AD just, or third, excuse me, just kind of run all over them. Fawn's going to get the counter snipe onto Shay, but almost the entire team is dead around him. Only three up, as, uh, we actually know Figzy has reconnected. Yeah. Or, is that cold, sir? It says Figzy on the SCV, but who knows with these things. Yeah, I think, yeah fast, so. I think fast forward was trying to do the thing of, they, they opted not to do the unpause and then quickly repause with the player in. They, they, which might point to being fed up if they're not doing that, but, you know, I apologize, we could debate the morality of it, but, you know, they did what was within their rights by the rules and, you know, pushed off of this. It's a grand finals. They've already been winning. They want to get this out of the way, and they just pushed all the last. They should have uber advantage again, I believe. Actually, yeah, about 30% advantage, and this looks like it could be a bit of a mental collapse from fast forward. I mean, if you're already losing by a lot and then that happens, you know, it feels like everything is going against you. Yeah, you know, just... Figzy's back in now, and Wall will have add on her. Fallen's gonna go down, and it just kind of feels like the, the fire kind of left them, you know what I mean? Where even though that last time was close, you saw things happening. But, I mean, 2 minutes and 58 through 3 is a blazing time, and with Coldster, actually, I guess that's Coldster on med now? Yeah, that looks it like seems that's to be, Coldster. Yeah. I think the name switched over, not entirely sure what, uh, what was going on there. But Uber's gonna get popped out of Wall. Coldster perhaps in return right now. They're gonna drop down. We're gonna see Dev actually jump up into that top left. Ronnie's gonna get taken out on cart, getting it very close to the hill. Pablo and Wall now, they're gonna start moving on to it. Dong is in a good spot behind them, but he's gonna go in for Shea, leaving his team to handle the cart. Not a bad decision. It looks like they are gonna hold it for now. Oh, Exile and Colts are gonna come in, take out the kills. Colts goes behind, gets the crossbow kill onto Dev. And against all odds, it feels like they are gonna hold last here. You know, we saw them hold it well in that uh in that last round there. So maybe they can get something going here. I mean, we've seen crazier things happen, so... But... Oh! oh. Shay takes down Coldster! That's... And you have, to, you, have to, you have to feel for Coldster, too. This is not the easiest situation to come in. As yeah, in the exactly. Of. You, you know, fast forward, if you, if you were watching from the start, you saw it. You saw AD, 4 and 6, fast forward 7 and 3. You know, that's... Those are very different records. And Triple, in lower right now, gonna try to come in, but he's gonna get taken out by Ronnie, and that's gonna be it, you know? Maybe Coldster is just trying to be a little aggressive there, getting into upper, but unfortunately, Shea had the sight line. And 4 minutes and 44 seconds, it looks like, not going to be the easiest time for Fast Forward to salvage their season off of. Yeah, Triple's actually lagging too. I wonder if that's a factor, but yeah, for sure. Um, you just hope that uh, they can show something here. I mean, this is technically possible. I mean, uh, Apollo just did it to them, right? It's, it's, not, it's not like one team can put up a time that's impossible for the other team to put up, but... Uh, it's going to be very tough. They basically can't afford to make a single mistake. And I think I think if they make it even a little close, regardless of the outcome, it'll show that they still have that fight in them. But if they completely crumble here, you'll you'll have to infer a little bit of a uh, little bit of a giving up factor. So uh, we'll see. But uh, it's going to be very difficult. Yeah, certainly. It looks like Triple and uh, Nipnop are both having some ping issues being discussed in the in-game chat, but. Something's telling me fast forward or just trying to escape this match as soon as possible. Which is unfortunate, you know, because... Well, first of all, we're both rostered on the team, so... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Would have the, as, the, uh, sub, the so. my, uh, my $3.50. Yeah, my uh, biased, biased casting desk, but... Uh, we'll see Dongus go out really quickly, so maybe not uh, entirely giving up right now. Exile's gonna get taken out early, as will Fallen, so... Until so Dongus got hit Arts of Spanian, that's a pretty big pick. Yeah, demos going down is good, and you know, even though the frags are kind of being answered, those fast respawn times, remember the long offense times, means that any kills offense can get are gonna be good. Triple's gonna go have to tap Reese up, it looks like, as a... Uh, Really is just a lot of kills. Shea already having five. Yeah, yeah unfortunately for him, Shea, Shea also wants to end this game and he's just deporting them all. He's sending them to the Shadow Realm, etc., etc. And uh, they need to make something happen here. They need to get on Shea. They can force Shea out here, get a nice Uber in. Yeah, Coldster and Exile. 
Yeah, with Fallen and Shay both going down, this could be good. The gun's not going to go down, but it looks like Wall is going to start backing up here. Probably aware of the fact that, you know, this half is very uh, weighted in their favor. Not going to want to make any silly mistakes. Dong is going to go in, though. Takes out Nipnop in the gun, which might not be as valuable as a med pick, but uh, still a good one. Ronnie's going to go down, too. So five or four down, excuse me, on the side of AD right now. Gonna mean It's going to mean that Fast Forward's going to get aggro. They have cart time. Mad deep on hill will take out Fallen. No sniper's going to help AD with a potential kind of repush into the second right now. But Colts are triple in the window. We see Dev go in from behind. Colts is aware of it. Gonna kite further in. So a uh, heads up play for both of them, really. As Dongus goes in for the high bomb, looking for a roll like he did for the last half. Not going to find them, but puts a lot of damage, forces them back. Exile uh, trying to maybe force Dev out of that window, but with the cart getting as close as it is right now, looks like it's not going to be enough. Exa and. Uh, Rating, excuse me, gonna be able to cap that, so very fast second time. And Arts is actually Arts, Matt, and River all go down. So AD losing more people on the defense, and I don't wanna I don't wanna say that it's a comeback yet, I don't wanna jinx it, but if you're gonna cap around in four minutes, this is what you gotta do. Shay's gonna go down on the Uber as it gets popped out from fast forward, wall popping back in return. But uh, Triple not gonna go down yet. Pablo missing the cleaver looks like at the very end. Ronnie's still in bucket though, gonna catch Exile in a bad spot. Will go down. Devin Nipnup down on the back end, but the card time is in Fast Forward's favor. Dongo gonna take out Arts. No demo. Means and he gets uh, wall too. Oh, he gets wall. Well, someone wants to win this game still, and his name is Mr. Del Dongo. I think he's kept Arts Spanion on a permanent respawn timer thus far this game. And yeah, Colts are still being alive means that they are gonna have Uber advantage. Two minutes left on the clock, pushing into last with a 60% add on the side of Fast Forward. It's. <laughs> It's doable, I'll say that at the very least. 75 now as Wall still hasn't healed anyone yet after respawning, taking a while to. Looks like she's crossing lower on her own. Satan might find her. Oh, he sees her, but uh, good on, excuse me, that's Ronnie to go up further and uh, kind of protect her there. Coldster Not today, though. Satan. Yeah, Coldster with Uber and lower. May see an Uber come out now, actually. And yeah, looks like it will get popped. Exile, far in, gonna take out Wall, doesn't get dropped, and he's able to meet back up with him, River's gonna go down as well, Ronnie's still in upper, but he could be getting forced out once they start walking in, guns level 2, AD's gonna be relying on that to really keep the uh, keep everything up, but... But Shay takes down Coldster, and he's still up top, they haven't cleared Shay out yet, and he's just annihilating them. Yeah, still not a... Uh... Not what you want to see out of Fast Forward if you want to win this. No one ever actually chased him out of boxes. And with that gun still up, you know, that, that miracle push may have been damaged a little bit. Art's playing really aggro in main right now, doing his best to force back Fallen. Could have maybe been caught out there the rest of Fast Forward. It was a little more aggro, but not going to happen as AD's getting their combo back up and upper. Not what you want to see. Yeah, a couple nice picks going in, but uh, Mad takes up Coldster. He's been doing it all night. It doesn't seem to matter who the other medic is. And uh, this is getting this is getting to, to some nice squeaky bum time. We have to see something happen here. Well, Dongo's looking for a play. Arspedian finally gets the better of him. 35 seconds left. The gun is still alive. I think I'm gonna call it, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, 30 seconds left right now, and uh, quick fix. It looks like four AD actually. So no Uber means they can't block the cart. Could be something big happening. Coldster only 25% on that Uber, but oh, Dev goes in, gets a huge amount of frags. Looks like that's gonna, that may be it. As trying to push in through upper, the gun's gonna take them out. Looks like we're gonna be seeing the upset coming in around one of playoffs. AD manages to do it again, and after 2 0 fast forward, they will be moving into the semifinals against KD, having guaranteed themselves third place and some of that sweet, sweet Highlander money. Yeah, you know. I've had a long track record of making fun of Spoo for losing to a, a previous iteration of this team, but uh, either I have to retire that or I have to start making fun of a lot more people because Apollodosh does it again. It's including ourselves as well, if you want to. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. Um, you want to go that far out. And uh, I don't want to drop too much insider knowledge, but I do think there is a possibility that some of the players have fast forward were kind of looking past this team a little bit, thinking already onto their matchup with Irene, and, you know, it just it, it didn't go that way. And this, this can always happen. I mean, we'll never know. I mean, maybe we will eventually know. I shouldn't say never. How much, whatever Figsy's leg issues were that played into it or anything like that. But, I, I mean, I, I'm not going to say AD didn't win fair and square because they definitely did. And it wasn't even that close apart from the first round of Upward. So, you have to say that they, they, they put on a pretty commanding performance. And Irina is going to have to 
if Irene is looking past them to, to just get to K&D, they could suffer the same fate. They're going to have to prep for this team. Yeah, I mean, we saw, we saw how well, um, we saw how well AD did against K and D on this map earlier in the season. You know, it it was, it was a close game. I remember Jacob going into that one. Uh, Demento was saying that you know, oh, this is going to be an easy match. Don't cast us. When I was talking to him about which one he should cast, and then that match went down to the very smallest of margins. So, I think, uh, I do think, kind of going into this, there was a bit more of a divide between the top two teams, that being K and D and Irene, and the bottom teams here, being Fast Forward and AD. Uh, just due to how well Fast Forward's been playing kind of recently. Um, however, though, this was this was a great game, and I think AD kind of proved that they really are here to uh, really here to make a statement. And saw some of the players making jokes about the twenty bucks they all just won in the chat, but they might be looking to win some more. And K and D, K and D gets uh, gets a little cocky. Who knows? Um, to I guess to push things along a uh, to push things along a little bit here. We will be moving into some interviews as we've got quite a uh, quite a list of players from AD looking to be brought in, and with that, we'll be bringing in special esport journalist Bowl of Mayo as well. Um, so we'll be getting them dragged in right now, I do believe. Yeah, you guys might want to put your uh, parental advisory explicit content warning on. Yeah, maybe talk to some Twitch admins, indemnify ourselves. You know. All right. All right, welcome. Good evening. Welcome. Salutations. Yeah, we've got uh, Hero. We've got, as I said, special esport journalist Bowl of Mayo in here, ah, as yes, well yes. as Art Spanion, uh, Pablo, and River. Uh, all right, so, so I guess I'll take it away from here. Thank you all for coming out to match, and I'll be doing your interviews today. So we have we have Dirt Pony, also known as Pablo, Art Spanion, also known as Johnny, and River. Hi. So I have some questions lined up for you guys. You guys can either go all answer them, or you can have like one person answer them. But first one that I have lined up is: uh, What were your thoughts coming into this match? We were gonna win. We've been playing a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like Viaduct was becoming like one of our core like strong maps. So I felt if we can take Viaduct, even though it's like a fifty-fifty chance, if we take Viaduct, we take the series. And Just gonna like, cut in for a second and say that Mad Ring Me, the, uh, oh, the yes, legend himself, is here. No, he made up? picks on product. Oh, are we definitely fast forward players as well? I think it'd be fair for him. Yeah, I don't know I don't... if they have any interest in. Uh, other than, okay. other yeah, than the Alto, we'll... who are technically fast forward players. All right, so, but, uh, Mad to, to, uh, to include you, Matt, I think the question was what were your thoughts going into this match? I mean, it definitely was like. We we wanted to have some momentum being built up on product to move us into upward because uh, that's just how we play, I guess. But Dring me, what were your thoughts going into this match? My thoughts going into this match. Hmm. Yep. I say it. My thoughts were Shay popping off, Nip not popping off, and this easy win. They carry. So, before the match even happened, what was your team's thoughts and your thought process when it came to the picks and bans for the maps? Uh, Johnny from Cali. Oh, yeah, you can answer that. Uh, okay. So, we were... There was two maps that we were kind of worried about. Like, we weren't really comfortable playing, which is both Asheville and Steel. So, we were Every able to get... Those? Um, it's just, it's too complicated. Well, you know, the maps are too complicated. Yeah, you just I mean, gotta... Fast Forward did take wins against them in the regular season on both of those maps, which is something I kind of pointed out in the articles as well, that I was surprised. You know, you guys banned Steel, which I think is certainly a smart move. They had beaten you on it, you know, just last week, so I doubt there'd be too much change in that. But when they didn't first pick Asheville, I was I was pretty surprised watching that. From yeah, like a third party. yeah, when they picked, when they first picked Viaduct, I was also surprised. And I was like, you know what? This is it. So we were, it's between down to Swiftwater and Upward. Swiftwater for us was a wild card because we didn't play it at all, but we picked during the bye week. So it was more like it was a gamble, like a high risk, high reward type of scenario. Right. Like, so I placed a safe bet on Upward because 
even though we have lost against K, uh, K and D and DK and other teams in the past, but they've been really all close games and they come down to the wire. So I felt like we were comfortable on upward. And if we can take Viaduct, we win the series. And we, and it was just a gamble, basically putting, um, having to water in, but I guess it paid off. All right. So during, oh, go ahead. I have a bit of a question for you guys, if I can ask it. Hello, Muster Overlord, long-time listener, first-time caster. Actually, that's not true. Multiple-time caster. Technically a member of Fast Forward, so I guess I can represent them. Sort of, kind of, not really. They just lost me money. But um, I feel like, for whatever reason, people seem to overlook your team, you know? We've heard multiple players, both in public and private, from Candy, from... I don't know if I, I really even think about these players. From, from Fast Forward, say things like, Oh, you know, we'll get this win, and then we'll move on to the next team. Or, oh, don't worry about this match. It'll be I've easy. never said that. Well, other than both, Bull is great respect yep. for you. Yes. But uh, what what do you think it is about your team that makes people overlook you, and and what do you have to say to all the haters out there? Good question. Chaos. Yes. Chaos. 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 All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna answer that for the most Overlord. Alien. So historically, um, Fat, uh, Polnosh has won every single upset um as their first playoff match when it's when it, it could be an upset. Season 23, it was against Spoo. Season 25, it was against Spoo again. And they were, I think they were one round off of beating DK as well in Season 25. You see, yeah. you, see, I, you see, I knew that bowl, but at the same time, at the same time, I just chalked it up to Spoo, you know? I just assumed that was well, a common threat. Here's the thing. But it turns out it wasn't if, Spoo's fault at all. Uh, well, no, it was. Regardless, Season 23, you did get um, demolished. So the, re the reason why I've always said that Apoldosh is a chaos team and you should not joke around with them is because they're very aggressive and they learn very fast and uh, the the biggest example of this uh, that applied to me would be this season when it was on upward and uh we had some roster changes and i was i was like all right guys they won the first half and they're all feeling cocky and i'm like all right guys let's like let's not get cocky so we can win and when you get cocky or you change your play style um i apologize uh, reacts to that very swiftly, so we lost a round to that, and losing that round is actually very crucial, because if we would have not dropped a round, it would have made our end of the season easier and less tense. So, Apollodosh, again, the reason that I've always respected them is that they're aggressive, and that they conform very fast to changes, and I, because of that, I think that's why they've had so many upsets in the past three, four, five seasons. I guess I have a question for you, Bull. I mean, you're what wearing you're wearing the dual hats of both uh, interviewer and analyst. I mean, is that stressful for you? How do you manage the the dual jobs? <laughs> the dual I'm a, I'm a god. Um, I would be doing more analysis, but uh, well, you're just, you're just a busy man. man. Uh, all right. So we continue to the next question. Um, so if we move to app during the match, um, what was your mentality and comms during the match? I I let's say during the before you won the first map after you won the first map, and then during the second map. What were your mentality and comms throughout the entire time? Um, our comms were actually really concentrated, like really precise, concentrated, and... Comms got cluttered a lot. They would, like, get very, uh... Excited. excited. Towards the, the end! Comms. Towards Wait, the end! Okay, so nah, hold on. Were they, were, <laughs> hold on. Let me ask you, like, Tony. Were they so... concentrated and precise, like Art Suspanian no, says? No, and the first <laughs> round, the first, the first two rounds, the first two rounds, the first two rounds, the first two rounds were good. And then as like the match continued, we just yeah, got more and like more excited. Time. No, no, like as well, Mad think... started to kill everyone, we we realized, oh shit, we gotta we gotta calm down. We... Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, all right. So if if we if we work off that, after you won the first map, would you say your comms are a bit more chaotic during the second map? And I bring this it, up it because on, like... the, on the last half of upward, you guys almost crumbled. Like it was very yeah. bad. The, the fact, in my opinion, the reason that was said is because of Shay, that last yeah. half. And I think you guys got too excited. What were your comms during that second half of Upward? It was, it was just like, was calm down. Less, yeah, it was a lot yeah, of calm down, calm down. down. Let's, just yeah. let's just regroup. Something I kind of want to tag off on that, since I think Mustard and I both mentioned we were kind of surprised. But So when you guys capped last in that first half of Upward, you know, you guys had like four minutes to cap, and we're thinking, oh, okay, you know, it's it's looking bad for Fast Forward, but they pull out, you know, defense after their defense after defense, triple sitting in that lower spot, and he's not budging. And then there's 25, I, I vividly remember Mustard saying, and there's only 25 seconds left, AD's gonna need a miracle. And I like looked at the logs I had pulled up on another screen for like four seconds, and I look back in, and there's five people on cart, and it's about to get tipped in, and like, 
what was what was your guys calls during that you know did, did you just have like a, a last minute zerg rush kind of plan lucky. like what was your we, nah, we um, it was in the heavy i think right no nah, yeah, nah, yeah, yeah yeah like the heavy got pushed out or something we, like, and then yeah, we, yeah, got the we all pressed our team dev like, dude really got spamming out the heavy i killed the sniper so it was like a free win there i got, I think, I got yeah mad saved us the point we, we like we, I, I gotta they say, as a caster, man, as a caster watching that, you know, I was impressed, as Bull said, by your ability to adapt and be aggressive, because it was obvious to me, watching as, you know, as a, as a spectator, that it was that, that heavy underneath that was really causing me to lose those pushes, yeah, yeah. but to realize that in the moment, and then actually, like, all focus him down, and not bait one another, and get in, and everyone claps on the cart instantly, you know, it was, it was well done. Because, like, it, it was a problem that first half, but the second time, you, you got him out, like, qu quickly, like, instantly. Yeah, I was running lock and load, so I was ready. Yeah, All we right. saw that too. So yeah, you're good, good, good adaptation. So if we, the next one I've lined up is uh, overall who had the most impact of that match? Mattering me. And mattering me. That would you, would you say what? Would you, would you say why? If you, if you had enough like, like from each team, who would be and why? Mattering me came in close. Well, I mean, for each map, I honestly say like different people had more, much more impact. All right, than, explain like, for each map. On product, I'd say like. Exa came really. Exa, like, I think Exa solo carried one of the rounds with the gun and Fallen Lord. Like, yeah, the round we lost. Off guard, like, yeah, and, level Chase gun, or not, uh, and Exa's gun was like doing a lot of work, like denying bombs and stuff. And then, uh. Yeah? Upward thing, hold on. <laughs> uh, upward, I'm, I'm trying to think about Upward. Upward was probably triple. Of course, he, he really caught us off guard with the. So, one thing to note about triple. Part. Was it you feeding into him, or do you think Triple was more gaining those kills off of his team dying? Because, uh, I mean, like, we would... Part of it was baiting that was brought up earlier. Yeah. What, what do you think it was? Do you think it was him getting aggressive on you guys and getting you by surprise, or is it him getting more passive frags and, like, tag-alongs? I mean, he would, like... I think it was just, like, a, like a lack of coordination that we would get, get him. Like, we would, like, we knew we wanted to kill him, and then it would, like, it would be, like, a bad timing thing or something, and he would just get kills uh -huh. like that. From watching from the casting perspective, it felt like a little of both because when I saw he was 22 and 6, I'm like, oh, he just, you know, farmed and lower. But you look at the breakdowns and he got 11 kills in each round, which means he got 11 kills on offense upward heavy, which I think is yeah, you know, that's, towards that's, the higher that's end of that. That's difficult. So I think you could say that, you know, he was quote unquote baiting in that lower spot, but it's kind of by design. Right. You know, yeah. the whole point is that everyone else plays on cart while you let your big gun sit in safety and yeah. pick up all I the frags. But I, I didn't really I to, notice I, I, him on the offense there. He plays I'm, positioning well. Yeah, he did what he's supposed to do. Yeah, I'd say from my perspective, he was hashtag not the problem in that yeah. game. Yeah. To tag along with impact, um, the another one I have lined up is what was the biggest issue from the opposing team that you that you faced during that match? Fallen overall. Yeah. F yeah Fallen fallin'. on product was uh, we started we we started getting uh we started getting picking off. We... Yeah, they started playing around him a lot more. So it was hard for me to get him. As the I casters, I would agree. Yeah. How do you think? How would? How did you guys counter that in order to go towards your favor on product? I will not respect and hopefully Shay yeah, will get Arts, the uh, uh, Arts does <laughs> not respect. I did the same thing and I died ten times to him. But see, like, see, Johnny's on the right probably. track. <sighs> you know, he's just. You know, he's not going to hit me. He's going to miss. Yeah, that's right, it. Well, that's not. That wasn't my mentality, but. Sniper miss, it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> if he you misses, could, he's dead. It's a pretty good call. So the last question I have before the last question is, if you could change things about the match to, so like, plays, decisions, what would they be? So it'd be more your, your end. If you could change something from your guys' performance in the match, what would it be? I guess probably we to got, make, it, make it more convincing or, like, you know. We got really, really sloppy in the last half of Upward, I think. Like, yeah. everyone just, like, thought it was copy, in the bag, and we all started, like, playing really poorly. Yeah. Right. I got like, picked off twice by yeah. transitioning, and I was... Me, me included. That... I just, like, died, like, in random spots. I don't know. So, personally, for me, it would have been in the second half, not dying to the Dongo and transitions, both in second and third. Personally. But also, that... watching out for uh, Dongus bombing our medic on the upward second, I still have no clue where he came from. I... He, it was a high bomb. He I literally bomb. just came in from... <laughs> He did, he did the one where you jump from, like, side tunnel area on hill, then hit the uh, second yeah. rocket off the top of window, uh, and then just flew in from, like... Because, like, I was, like, watching Upper, because, like, our, our, heavy, our heavy heavies in the apartment, so I'm watching Upper, and then suddenly there's just a soldier behind me, and our medics dropped. 
So uh, I that think was, uh, I, one other question I just thought of was, what were your guys's? This might not be much of much of importance, but what were your guys's thoughts when um, Figzy and Coldster traded off? Um, <laughs> personally, it, it, do you it, think much of it, or is it just? It I don't is, think it really mattered. It sucks okay. overall. Like, yeah, they, like, yeah it's, it sucks for them, them overall, but like to be in. This is why there needs to be a Highlander land. <clears throat> Can if, I ask what you guys are listening to at the moment? And monkey yes. sounds. Uh, also in Mustard Overlord, before I ask my last question to them, do any of you have any additional questions? Uh, I, yeah, actually, I've got, I've got go two. Ahead. Um, one is, I want to direct this one at Mad in particular. Um, the I dreamy. think the, the, kind of the, the initial, I guess, hype point was for those five kills you got on Figzy in that first round. And, yeah. well, granted, you know, though, obviously, I don't think that's really sustainable for any spy to continue that many, but we, you know, we saw you get on get in on her a little less, but still got a number of frags on her. What do you think they could have? What do you think Fessword could have done better, just to you know maybe stop that? Because whenever whenever your meds getting stabbed a lot, it's always kind of a nuanced issue because you can just say, oh well, you know, just have your meds spy check more, but it's on other classes as well too. So, well, like it, the only reason I was getting the med was because like Dev, we were coordinating a lot, like really good together. So once he bombed, it was just like I was right behind Fixie and I was getting her. Yeah, whenever Mad did not get the medic, Dev got the medic. So. Mm. Right, and then I guess for uh, for Johnny Mustard and I were both talking about how coming into this, you know, I think the the snipers were like the two big highlights to look for, whereas we brought up that the two demos were somewhat of, not to say the lowlights, but I feel like we said that you know Exile's been having somewhat of or definitely has been underperforming this season compared to what you may have expected coming in, whereas you haven't had the most high-level demo experience, so when a lot of people look at the AD roster, you know, you think, what are my major, you know, players to watch? You're not often one of them, Amir, you're saying, you know, if one of them can kind of have a really big game and prove everyone wrong, then you'll see that team do really well, and you ended up having that tonight, so what have, I guess, your, been your thoughts on this season and on this match, and, you know, I, I, know, the, I know the chaos has been mentioned before, so... How do you think that kind of plays into your performance and your role on the team? Um, on Viaduct, you can ask Banny this, but my blind pipes are really good. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They're really good. Yep. That's I'm pretty so much sad. it. I like that answer. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> They're really good. Alright. Buster Doverlord, do you have any questions? Yeah, I guess I'm just wondering uh, what you guys' thoughts are now that you know that you're going forward and you're going to play Irene again, I guess. Oh, that was my last question! Some... Right, my what? last question was, what were your thoughts on the next match against Irene without giving up, like, without exposing your old map, like, thought process? What are your thoughts on the next match? Hey, Bucks, it's still still blind pipes? It's mostly, you'll see. I think uh, I one word. No, two words. Sniper. You'll oh. see. You'll see. <laughs> I think, uh... <laughs> yep! Well, I guess, the, I guess they get a little bit more of a... Since this is a good question, I guess to get a little bit more of a concrete and a thing, I, I think going into this, um, I'd say the map pool wasn't entirely in your guys' favor, just off of the fact that, you know, when I, when I, I think about the maps that you guys are really good at, I think of, uh, I think Vigil and I think Cascade. Whereas when you guys are playing against Irene, I mean, you guys played both of them, you guys played them on both of those maps this season, so as you're going to have, uh, or did you guys play? No, you played Borneo against Irene, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so well, you guys still had a close game yeah, with them there, so yeah. you're gonna have Borneo in the map pool this time, you're gonna have, mm -hmm. um, you're gonna Cascade. have Cascade, so do you think that is a, you know, I guess a kind of boon for you guys going into that? Like, it's gonna, you know, maybe think... give you guys a little bit more to work with in the pick ban? Irene wants Cascade and Borneo. I think those are their ideal maps. And are, are you guys willing to beat them on that? I mean, not to... Uh, all I, mean, I can like, say it, is that was, uh, I like well using the Phlogistonator on Borneo. I told and... you not to give up anything about your strats or your maps, bro. Calm down. Calm <laughs> I did down. it last time. I did it last okay. time. Yeah. Come on, but you use... I use a Phlogistonator when we played in Season 23. Okay, but they wouldn't know that. That's the, the whole point. Bull, I, I, last time we played them, I used it. I'm not telling Irene. You're going against Irene, not me, bro. The point, the point is, is that, um, I guess we're ready. <laughs> we're yep. ready. Gosh. We're ready. We're I ready. I, the pop, we've, yeah, pony we've pogger, what do lot. you think, what do you think of the map? I, what I do think you think of the been, match? We've been improving a lot rapidly. We kind of like, we fell off pretty hard in the middle what of the season. The wake I think up we're, what was I the wake-up call? What was the wake-up call? I think we're back, basically. You're back? Doing, what was the wake-up call? 
uh, regular it's, it's season's something. over and playoffs is now started. Uh, no, right. it was like we were like we were like on fire at the beginning and then we on fell fire. off pretty hard and now we're 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 back in there. Were, uh, were you a fireball? Yeah, you can't make a fire joke. Playoffs, but you, everyone's just playing a lot better. Everyone's taking a lot more seriously. I guess All I have right. one. I have one question to close out, uh, which is. What, if anything, do you think the success of your team says about the power of friendship? Uh, and it really helps. Ponies of Equestria, Mustard Overlord. Ponies of Equestria. Uh, I feel like uh, I love everyone on my team. If there's so uh, okay. tension and mumbling, dangerous it really helps words. As well. Dangerous words, Johnny Arts. Could you even say you love your teammates? Um, I love also, my teammates. also, I think you need to move. Um, the leader of a polo. Uh, yes, be, Ronnie the, J. Wants be to move. Um. Right. Oh, I'll, I'll give him his. I'll give okay, him his five Ronnie minutes. J. No, no words. No words. Okay, go ahead. Huh? Uh, no specific words. Go ahead, what? Ronnie. What? Hi. What are your What are your thoughts going into this match? Going into the match? Yeah. Uh, that Del Dongo threw with map picks. Uh. Oh, really? Because we, we uh, all the all the <laughs> casters thought you that you guys lost the map match well, personally. I wouldn't say lost. I mean, I, I think, think the so. pool. I think no. the pool. Was, okay, the pool. Okay, the our, pool was like, unfavorable to you guys. The but pool I was so to... unfavorable to us. Like the map, we had the best chance of winning was product, and like steel were awful at steel um like like just most of those maps in there we had been beaten by fast forward before like the two maps that we beat them before on were upward and product and it's we... actually the first time we beat fast forward in a match <laughs> well no no yeah, in a match Setting. yeah but we've like we've beaten them in scrims before but it's like we beat irene more than we do, we do fast forward because just like the way they play i was, yeah. I was, how do you I was think... really confused as to why they didn't pick Asheville. how do you think Del i thought Bongo they would pick swift one the... okay no so the thing is is that nobody on their team wanted to play Asheville um for some reason uh like doldongo wanted to pick Asheville, but everyone was like kind of chimping out and exile didn't want to play it so I yeah they're like you seem to be a little more loose lipped about maps what we had brought up before was that you know with about the map pool being unfavorable this time going against irene i don't know what the full pool is you're obviously going to have product uh upward and steel in there but you're also mm -hmm. going to have uh at the very least cascade and borneo because you guys played them on those maps so mm -hmm. you know do you think that that kind of widened pool kind of plays since i know you guys i know both of both of your teams are both pretty close on cast or uh, pretty good at cascade no they, they also, will destroy us on right, cascade. Well, I, I, I was gonna right. say that too i think they're much better than us at cascade. They, right. danny doesn't do much on a lot of maps but on cascade he is the scariest player of all time noble noble he also is not on my friends list anymore. He unadded Yeah, me. same. I can relate. I wonder what happened. <laughs> uh, yes, Betty Alton, had some... Alton. Let's just say Betty exchanged some words. Yeah, I, I, saw some okay, so, I saw the chat logs. I saw the chat logs. Okay, so Alto, I just asked Banny how his swamp ass was going, right? <laughs> and, and he said the funny word. No, I didn't oh, say the funny, no word. funny word. No, Banny I didn't did. see the. All right. Oh, it... <laughs> all right. I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna curtail that. Uh, all right, so right like, there. And... Shut up. I think. I think. I think we're gonna wrap up the interviews God. here. So for the uh, for the players here, any final words? Shout out to shout Oscar. Out to the new shout out to uh, <laughs> shout outs to Oblivion. Shout outs oh, to uh, Kega Man. Spoo. Shout outs to Nipno. Oh, shout, shout, shout out to Hans and William. Shout out to Captain. Shout out to Oscar the Nealus Turtle. Also, Spoon. Oh, shout, shout out to, to Rob Scoop Deb. Because Spoon got Deb, us that free game and he warmed shout us up. <laughs> shout out to April. All right. All right. I think uh, I think after those shout outs, that's going to do it for us here. So, uh, great match tonight. Saw AD shout out to taking the upset. Yeah, taking the upset win. They're going to move You're into the semifinals to play Irene. They're guaranteed placement. And for uh, for all the players on AD, I'm Alto, joined with Mustard and Nice All Behind the Camera. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. I'm fat. Oh. <laughs>